Okay, let's do roll call. Uh, Tom? Here. Jim? Here. Alex? Here. Bob? Here. Recording okay. stopped. And, and I'm here. Oh, hold on. The recording stopped. Recording in progress. Oh, it's back. Okay. Okay. Continue. Lauren and Carl are not attending this evening. All right. Uh, item two. Any member of the public would like to address the commission on any item not on the agenda? All right, seeing none. Item three, public meetings, RDAs. Um, A, 240 Russellville Road and continue from 614, 2022. Do we have an update, Anna and Karen? Um, a sale on that house is currently pending. I did speak to the realtor because she was looking for a COC, which is something we don't give for RDAs. Um, I told her, hey, this is what's on the property. Here's all the legal things, you know, please inform the buyer. So it is up to them still whether or not they want to withdraw, if they still want to give us plans, up to Oscar. The new property owner will be responsible for the enforcement order that is against them, however because um, that runs with the land. Okay. And, and you inform them of the inability to put a septic system in where they originally wanted to do that? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, Hopefully thank you. Hopefully it uh, gets passed uh, along. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to add something. I, I would like to add uh, a suggestion that Anna formalize that and put it on a uh, letterhead and uh, you know, to that realtor, so we have an audit trail. I have an email trail. Okay, if that suffices, fine. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, item B, 47 Castle Hill Road. Oh, so are we continuing? I'll, yeah. give, you a, I'll give you a motion to continue, Sorry. Mr. Chair. Okay, do you have a second? I'll second it. All right, all in favor, Jim? Yep. Tom? Yes. Alex? Yes. Bob? Yes. And I'll vote yes. Thank you. All right, item B, 47 Castle Hill Road, installation of fence in backyard. Again, continued from 614, 2022, asking work and ordinance. Uh, okay, do we have a, a proponent or um, an update from the office? Um, so we went on a site visit on the 23rd of June. Um, the, we were showed the location of where the fence was going to go. It was slightly down the slope, which raises a little bit of concern um, just for erosion purposes of the slope. We suggested to them that the fence be moved up to slope to level land, but it does reduce the space pretty significantly because it's a small backyard. Um, and it is an aluminum fence with concrete footing. That's all I got. Okay. I don't know if anyone is here from 47, the La Roses. So are you rec recommending we require the, the fence to be up on level land or let them put it where they originally wanted to? Karen and I talked about it and we kind of just left it up to the applicant. Um, we said, you know, like if you put the fence here and the slope of roads away, you're, you're responsible for, for fixing it. So it's, it's something that they have to consider. Is to install the fence post, they would actually be digging in the slope. And I didn't think that was a really good idea given the history of all the problems we've had on that street. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I strongly encouraged him to move it. And I think it was only a couple of feet. I don't think it was all that much of a um, decrease. Like three feet forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but it, on, a, on a corner in, you know, um, so is he not here? I was hoping to have him here and say, do you mind if we move that line, you know, whatever, yeah. three feet over, but he's not here. Um, I don't know what his name is. I only know that Brittany and I don't I want to say his name is Brian, but I don't think it's Brian. Um, <laughs> you want to uh, just uh, uh, move it on to the next meeting or just close it? Do you have a copy of the plan, Anna? Maybe we can show them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think he was he was kind of agreeable. He wasn't not agreeable, but I don't think he really 
understood that he would have to change the plans to reflect that. I strongly suggested it to him. Okay. okay. Could we approve it tonight with the understanding that he pulls it back three feet? Is three feet a good guess? And then we can modify the plan ourselves and he can either say yeah or, or not build the fence or come back to us. And one, one question, is it doable coming in three feet or does it really create a problem? I, I, I think it is. It's, so it's essentially this corner right here instead of having this um, because that's where the slope kind of starts going down. Um, you cut that in like right here and it's like in front of a tree and it's more stable um he said that the purpose of putting it back there was so that he would have to cut down less trees and kind of just go around them um right so he's going outside rather than inside them so yeah but but it's doable without a hardship right well it's a fence for a dog so i mentioned it's not that much of a hardship well, okay <laughs> but how far, I mean, Bob, you, you, this is a good question for you. How far down would a fence post have to be dug for that type of fence? How many well, you know, the frost is going to heave it and the roots are going to heave it mm. in the winter. So you got to re remember that. So mm. obviously upland would be better. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to, it's not going to give them the space they probably wanted, but I think it's a good compromise. I did not realize when I suggested we approve it pulling back three feet that that required taking trees, which are probably stabilizing that slope. Uh, I mean, I, I, if he's, if that's what he's doing, then I, I kind of like his logic if he's going around the trees. And as you said, let him deal with it if it, if it starts to uh, erode. Do you have a photograph, anyone? Yes. I don't think I took a photo of the trees though. Oh. So, so Tom, to your, your tree removal point, I think he, he pointed out a couple of very small saplings that he might have to cut, but the larger trees, he's trying to work around like Anna was saying, and that's the reason why he was proposing to put those poles slightly down slope because it was going around a very large tree. So we said to him, why don't you go inside the very large tree? And even though that's gonna decrease a little bit of his dog run, um he still i think he'll still have plenty of room okay i'll go with the flow here I, I think we leave it up to them and then if there's an issue then we we look back at it so this is that corner that they were referring to um i believe or the corners over here hold on give me a second i gotta move stuff around on the other screen there we go yeah, so it, it's this corner right here, that's and then the it starts going post. down the slope from there. That's the proposed post location that, that he's yeah. proposing? Yeah. I think the other one is actually worse, though, um, near the large tree. Do you have a picture of where it was by that really large tree? Because <clears throat> that was that point. This, of... this is the large tree right here. <clears throat> Which is the large tree? This this one. Oh. Uh, uh, it's, it's the, the blue tarp that's on the, the a lot of trees on the other side. You can't see it probably because your your zoom camera is blocked like your where your, where we are on your screen is blocking it. But the, that is the post that's directly behind the large tree. But isn't there another one behind the blue tarp that's even further down? This looks pretty flat. I mean, there's one that's beyond the blue tarp. I think that's more down slope. And that is the one of concern. Yeah. When you see it goes beyond. <clears throat> well. I can't show you, but I, I don't know where it is in relation. Yeah, I don't. I don't have too much of an issue with that particular slope we're looking at here. Yeah, and, it's it's not what the one I'm thinking of. The one I'm thinking of is much steeper. So there might be one one touchy point that they could have some problems with in the future. <clears throat> I'm kind of with Bob on this one. They, I think we just leave it up to them and you know if it if it erodes away, it erodes away. And we have to fix it. But yeah, the, on the right side is is the large tree. And there might be, I might be standing at where I took this picture, I might be standing at the slope because I took a photo from it would be on here though. 
Yeah, like, I, it, I, it, it I, would be here. You can't really see the slope from this. These pictures. No. It's, it's yeah. much more significant. This is this is the slope. <laughs> yeah, there's a, well, there's a stake right here in the foreground of this photo too. If you look down, yeah, that's one of his one of his sticks there. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it seems like that it's in the point. it's in the upper part of the slope, and then it continues to break. Yeah, um, it, it's right right at the top of the slope, and this is the other side of the slope. But the area looks pretty stable in general. I know we're saying he can dig a hole in that stable area, but you know this isn't like the washout down the street where the thing was blown open. Like this looks pretty, pretty stable to me from yeah, these I mean, photos. You, you, yeah, I mean, even the vegetation there, yeah. Even the vegetation that's on there, everything looks stable. So you're only going to dig a fence post, correct? Right. All right. So you want to leave it as written on the plans? Yes. I'll give you that negative three, positive five, whenever you're ready. Okay. Well. First, are there any other questions or comments from the commission? Any questions or comments from the audience concerning this project? Seeing so none, entertain a motion to close the public meeting. I make a motion to close. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Jim? Yes. Tom? Yes. Alex? Yes. Bob? Yes. I'll vote yes as well. Thank you. All right, Tom, now you can make the motion oh. on the recommendation. Thank you. I'll, I'll make a motion that we issue a negative three with the following conditions, that there shall be no stumping, uh, but can hand, but can grind stumps to gradient, all work to be done by hand, no materials to be dumped on or down the slope, no extra materials are to remain on site post construction. And in addition to that, locally, we'll, uh, I'm going to suggest we issue a positive five with no NOI required. All right. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second. second. Jim can have it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor? Jim? Yes. Alex? Yes. Bob? Yes. Tom? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Thank you. OK, item C, 445 Root Road. Um, so in accordance with provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, public meeting will be held at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, June 28, 2022, a virtual meeting regarding request for determination Oops. of applicability submitted by Sarah Cabral to determine whether the construction of an addition, pool, shed, and tree stump removal, parentheses, work is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act whether the area and or work is subject to the jurisdiction of any municipal wetlands ordinance at 445 Root Road. Again, asking work and ordinance. And there was a site visit uh, earlier last week. Yeah, so last week we went and Karen and I could not find the flags for the delineation. Turns out they were just buried super deep in the Phragmites. Um, so we went back today. Um, we saw the flags and we had to communicate to Sarah that we just needed more information um, on the plans because she was mentioning fill and we were like, well, that's not here. We need change of gradient. We need change of slope um, and we need a limit for work and also where the riverfront area line is. Um, I did get an updated map and it has the line for the riverfront area and the 200 feet, but I still don't have anything on a um, limit of work or more contours or anything like that. Um, I have to find it. Hold on. On again. <laughs> Did you have a photo of the plan so far? Yep. I'm getting it. Taking it sweet old time. All right, so these are wonderful, wonderful plans <laughs> that have caused many problems. So essentially, um, when these were first given to me, I assumed that not knowing the area, that this RA line, riverfront area line was the 200 foot border, 
um, of the riverfront area. It turns out this is the start of the riverfront area and it goes all the way out to here. So this is 200 feet from the riverfront. Um, so where they are proposing to build a shed is within that, some of the pool and some of the addition to the house. There was mention of um, fill in this outflow area right here and covering the driveway, but as you can see that that's outside the 200 limit. Um, but if they were to fill in this area to kind of control the water, we would need to know the change of slope and the gradients on that. Um, if they want to remove the stumps that they want to take out, we need to know where those are. And then of course, what is going to be put in and where it's going to be put in as far as plants go. Um, and again, if any of these things like the shed or the pool um, or the addition require leveling of the land or beams or posts, it's, that's more information we need to know because obviously that requires bringing in fill and changing the gradient and okay. elevation. So it looks like they're in the outer 50 of the, one, of the 200 feet and they're mm -hmm. outside of the 100 feet of the wetland. Yes, correct. Okay. So, so you, you just need more information on the plan. Is that your summation? Yes. Um, any questions from the commission? Okay. Is the uh, applicant or applicant representative here? This I'm evening? an applicant. I'm here. Uh, All right. Welcome. Hi. This has been a long process. <laughs> um, I did reach out to several of the people doing the plans. Um, and everybody kind of said that they don't actually put any of the plants or the trees on here. Um, that's what I've been told. And that usually um, in conservation, it's put in the expectation orders and conditions. So I'm at a loss of where that goes um, from there because, you know, I I'm, don't know where to go from here because they're like, I can't say what to do with your property. This is your plan and they are out here. They can tell you yes, no, what they want to do with the stump. So I'm spending thousands of dollars and still being put in a circle. And so I'm not really sure where to go from here. I'm lost. So I'm outside the wetlands, but I don't know what else to do about this. Good Sarah. evening, folks. Good evening, folks. My name is Christopher Bloom. I represent Sarah Cabral. Hey. Hi, Chris. Um, so, so we've got a couple of things going on here. We've had GZA go out there twice to identify the wetlands. On the print, you'll show that wetland number three shows a marking of 141 feet, seven tenths to where the proposed addition is. In addition, you have the blue mark that shows where your river line is, and you've got the blue mark on the property that shows the 200 feet back from there, okay? It doesn't appear that there's any violation of the wetland, that's how I'll say it. And it doesn't appear that there's any encroachment to the wetland. Um, I think someone from the commission that came out today said you should mark up the, the, the survey there with, with plantings and shrubs and all that. In 26 years, folks, I've never seen that, nor has my engineer, nor has my surveyor. We usually see that in the order of conditions upon approval. You are approved by the Conservation Commission. The Conservation Commission wants X, Y, and Z, and we want this type of silt fence with hay bales, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Um, so quite honestly, I've got a registered land surveyor who I've worked with for 26 years, who's been doing this for 42 years. It looked right at me tonight and said, this afternoon tonight and said, I'm a land surveyor. I tell you where things are and, and what things look like. I don't, I don't put in things on a print and sign it that, ha that, that doesn't exist. And so that's where we are tonight, folks. What, do, what did he mean by that? He doesn't put things on a plan that don't exist. Can you clarify uh, he, that, Paul? Sure, sure. I'll tell you exactly what he means. And the gentleman's name is Randy Iser from Eaton Associates. He doesn't put in uh, 
plantings, if you will, on a on a survey that doesn't that that doesn't exist. His job is to locate the boundary lines, the dwellings, the sanitary system, and to reference point on the wetland flags. But before he could do that, that's where GZA went in and located the wetlands floors. So then who marked the proposed buildings on this map? The proposed building is what we need on the print to show the building department. I, we're not able to go to the building department until we get through conservation. So what conservation has is exactly what the building department has as well too, but the conservation commission has to go first because the building inspector can't sign off on a building permit until conservation has approved said work. Yes, but who marked the buildings on this plan? Like who, who drew those on scale to the plan? The land you're, say sur you're saying the land no. saver surveyor surveys what's currently on the land. Right. So who put the projections of the proposed buildings on the land? The proposed projections are the land save surveyor in accordance to the house print that's been submitted to the building inspector. If you give a land survey that's different in any which way, shape or form from conservation to the building department, there's grounds to deny the application for the building permit. Does the building submissions to the building department have like, what the buildings look like, how they're going to be structured. Uh, is there going to be fill brought in a basement and things like that on it? So I think the so so the answer to your question is is right now the building inspector has nothing because he has sent it back and said you got to go through conservation first. And I don't, with all due respect, I don't see how a building plan is a requirement in a conservation commission meeting. I, because if I'm if wrong, that's fine. You are, but if you're putting in a structure in the okay, 200 hold on, foot- hold on. hold on, miss. If I'm wrong, then with all due respect, you should have asked for it because the applicant and myself have been there many times and it's very easy to email it to you. So now we know that tonight's application is incomplete. I say that and in a very positive way. We if learned today print, that it was incomplete. Well, hey, Paul, Paul, this is Tom Sharp again. Is there good? Are you going to be taking any trees down inside the hundred foot buffer inside that yellow? I mean, green <clears throat> slash line. No, there are already uh, uh, trees that were cut down prior. And then there are a few that were cut down uh, probably six months ago that fell and crashed on my daughter's uh, playscape on on film. Um, so the stumps are all still there. We just ground up the mess and have left it there like that, waiting for all of this. So I, I did speak to the ladies on both occasions um, about, you know, we can leave the stumps, grind them down, cover them up. I mean, whatever, I've been very open to like whatever you guys want us to do, um, put it in the writing. You want certain plants. We, I don't know plants. Um, you want certain barriers. Um, you know, I, we were out there this afternoon after the ladies came, Chris came and the excavation person came just to look at everything. We marked where the hundred, uh, wetland edge and every single stump is on the <clears throat> other side. It's not within the hundred feet of the wetlands. Everything that would be touched is on the other side. Um, so whatever I, I, you guys would like to be done that, you know, it, it is just, can be just stated in whatever form you guys want it to be stated. Um, yep, Anna, Anna, in the past, we have had drawings that included more detailed information, but because the work is going to be outside of the 100 foot buffer, I, 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 I for one, feel this is adequate. And, and I'm not sure we need, we need a replanting plan if the work is all going to be outside the 100 foot buffer. It's all my, my opinion. It's within the 200 foot riverfront area. Yes, but historically we we've drawn the line at 50 feet, Anna. Um, I, I'm just telling you where where I'm coming from. I, this is I'm not worried about this one. 
I, I, I started this project actually with Meredith doing the right thing. I had her out before any of this was even drew, drew up or I hired my um, designer. I had her out and she told me everything to do, where to place everything that would be appropriate. Um, she even sent me the RDA forms, which I showed an in email. Um, I know she's gone now, but I planned this all prior to and didn't even pay any designers until I spoke and had conservation out to make sure I was in the right and that I wouldn't be spending money on plans that things were going to be in the wrong spot. Um, so I know Meredith is gone, but I felt like I was very proactive with your committee with Meredith and didn't get this done until afterwards. And I get she's gone. And then when we went, we went and submitted it is when we found out she was gone. Um, so, you know, I'm completely on board doing anything, any of, you know, you guys want us to put up barriers or even regrow things. I, I'm, I, as I said to them, I, we're pro plants. I want to regrow it. I want the land to look nice and all the, everything to flow nice. Uh, Mr. Chairman, go yes. to the applicant, I have a question. Uh, Sarah, I'm Jim Murphy. Hi. Um, so I did not see your site. So I'm only going from the plan here that I'm seeing yeah. on the screen. Um, can you talk about any type of regrading that you're going to have to do to the land that yeah. will change the slope in any way that yeah. may change the flow of water, sheet flow, anything like that? And those things do impact us. So I'm specifically asking about regrading. So there is some regrading that I, I said today that I wouldn't do if it was an issue. It's still on a past the 100 feet. But when um, prior to me buying the house, the and when they put in a new septic for me to buy the house, the, the septic guy stole soil from the backyard and things do flush down our driveway, this side driveway that's diagonal from the proposed driveway. Um, so everything kind of flushes down that way. And there's actually in between the driveway, and, and there's a little hill, water kind of sits in there. So I was thinking what was best for everybody is to have that kind of graded a little bit. Um, Meredith did recommend us closing off that driveway because we have gravel and it does go in the road. Um, and we've had we had flooding down farther from another situation. So she was like, please, that would be great if you could fill that in with and grow stuff. And I was like, that's fine. We don't, we only need one driveway that, you know, um, so it would definitely change the grade a little bit, I guess, but all for the better and things to flow naturally into the, the stream um, and away from the house slightly. It's nothing, I don't think super major, but, I, I'm not in conservation, so I don't know what's major for you guys. Um, you know, I, the, I just wish that it, if they could tell me what, what they'd like, if it, do it this way or do it that way. Um, and then I said today, oh, if you don't want me to change the grading, then it can continue to flow into the street. I was just trying to make everybody happy. We don't need to shut down the driveway and it can continue to flow the way it does flow, um, which is not a good way, but. Does the water flow towards the wetlands at the present time on ungraded property? Yeah, in some areas, it has two little spots where it does dip in and make a little pool on rainy days. Okay. Yeah. Right. And where is your septic on this plan? It's in the front yard. I see it now. Okay. Front left, folks, furthest away from the subject wetland, front, front left. And where okay. the pool is now is actually a shed that was there when they built the house. So there is a shed there that was going to, is going to be moved. So there's already a structure where the pool is. Okay. Um, do you have a secondary field for septic or beyond the primary? Yes, we do. Uh, yeah, there's more than enough. There's this is Chris Bloom again. There's more than enough space on that sanitary reserve in the top left. Yeah, the septic's fully in the front yard and encompasses almost the whole front yard. Okay, so it really is Sarah, quite a ways quite a ways away. Oh yeah, it's way away from the wetlands. Right, it's on the you, whole other side. Do you have an in ground or a raised mound? 
uh, she's raised. She's raised, folks. She's yeah. raised. Yeah. Okay. She's raised. Okay. She's raised. If you uh, look so at the print. Back, back to um, my okay. question on the grading yeah. pre and post. I'm trying to get an understanding mm -hmm. if you're going to be contributing additional water to the wetland, removing water from the wetland, changing mm -hmm. the, the, the recharge of the wetland from your property line, because I'm not seeing really any topo lines. So, oh, so we're on a hill anyway. So okay. we get what's above us. We have a 90 acre hay farm above us and all the water on the street and everything go through our property to the brook. So it's just gonna make it so there's not indents through our yard because we're the, the septic guy he dug out, which when he did that, if you go to the building inspector, I did flag that he did that, he stole soil, um, <laughs> but they didn't make him do anything. And so you'll see like pockets in my actual yard. Many, much of it is actually outside the line, but some of it is inside the line. Um, and so just to smooth it out, I, not like any ginormous change. I mean, I don't know what a, you know, it will eventually, it is gonna be a change of slope technically, but it's not going to, it's still going to be going down towards the brook. We're on, we're on a hill. Okay. So it, going down that way and from the house it's now dips in right by the house i you know get it more towards the brook we want all the water to go into the brook and not into our basement okay thank you sir uh anna do we have any photographs of this property no no okay uh, I, I can take would... you guys outside if you would like to see a visual i think it would benefit you, the commission to go and take a look yeah. Um, and if I may put my two cents in now, if that's a good timing. Yes, go ahead, Karen. <clears throat> um, so from that blue riverfront area line that you now see towards, thank you for panning, down to, yeah, the, between those two lines, it decreases in slope. Um, so we would need to see contours. We would need to see changes in contours. Um, and if I can address the first concern of Sarah, the, the plantings were because most of the trees between, I don't want to say most, but many of the trees between that VVW line and the 100 foot have been just removed. There's probably, I don't know, Anna, what do you think, 20 trees? There's a lot of trees that have been removed within the <clears throat> riverfront area. Right. So understood it was, you know, an act of God, I get that, but we were talking about restoration of that piece in that context. So I just want you to understand it wasn't something above and beyond. We were trying to address a previous alteration of the riverfront area that we have to address. I, I also did not see this site. I would uh, appreciate the opportunity to do that. And I'm sorry, Sarah, that means another two weeks, but I think that's a good direction to go tonight. Well, again, we just opened this, this application this evening. Right. So it's incumbent on us to go out as commissioners and take a look at it because now we know what the project is. Oh, I didn't understand. I didn't realize that. Paul made it sound like it's been dragging on since uh, no, old man just, Moses. No, I just opened it tonight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was it was All just right. proposed tonight. Um, I did inform Sarah that it's typically first meeting it's proposed and the commission comes out. We do a site visit, second meeting, it's second, third meeting is usually approved. Um, yeah. And the commission tends to not do site visits beforehand because it, it tends to just be too short notice um, and just doesn't work out. So for instance, neither, no commissioners were able to come out the past two weeks. We also have two commissioners not in town. Um, so it's just bad timing for them to visit um, I do want to add, but going off of Karen with the contours are super important just because, you know, it, it, it's a lot of fill. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fill that would be brought in in order to level that area and create a more even flowing slope. But aside from that, the, the property essentially, if you're looking at this parcel, it slopes downhill from up here all the way down. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming Phil will also have to be brought in for the proposed shed and the proposed pool, which are in the riverfront area, 
which is our jurisdiction information that we should know prior to approving this. But I also said to you that I don't even have the proposed pool or proposed shed plan of anything. And you said, oh, they'll, you just put it on there. And then once it gets approved by commissioner, so I'm never going to have those plans in this time frame um, because I'm not ready to do the pool or the shed yet. <laughs> so that's I was, why we need unfortunately, a limit of work. that's why we need, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Anna. That's okay. why we need a limit of work. Show I us the limit of work, the extent of everything you want to do. I did, Show it's right there. Contours. And There's then no we can work here. I'm not going to if I'm not going to pay somebody else to do anything more on the plans, and I'm going to be very frank with that. So if you guys are so concerned with the the flow of it, then this is what it's going to be, and you know, then it will be the way it is. And it's bad for not only my house; it's bad for as far as I'm concerned, the wetlands since it and the city because the water is going into the city. So I I spent thousands of dollars on this. And everybody's looking at me that I call them and they're like, well, I'm not putting a tree in. Let them tell you where they want a bush or what it is. And so that's where I'm at. So if you guys wanna come out and say, oh, do this or that or whatever and put that in the plans, I am happily to oblige. But get, paying for somebody to come and do this 3D, this, that, and the other, everybody's like, I'm not, we don't usually do that. And that's what we're not doing. So we won't move the soil. <laughs> I mean, if that's what needs to happen. Okay. All right. Th thank you. Now, before we come out on a site visit, okay. Um, what we what we really would like is for you to to mark uh, with stakes the corners of the buildings you want to put in. They actually were marked today, and also we marked the wetlands today. So everything is marked with a post um, as of five p.m. today when the Chris came out and the excavator. So even the hundred mark from the house, they measured it and from the wetlands is there. Um, so you'll see where the hundred feet is and you'll see where the edge of the, all four actually, cause the excavator guy wanted to mark where the proposed addition is and everything. Okay, so the, the quarters of the pool and the shed are marked. Uh, the shed I didn't mark, but I will go out there and I'll mark it. I uh, actually, well, I spray painted it the other day. So I'll see if it's still spray painted and I'll respray paint it for you. Mm -hmm um the the pools where our current shed is so the whole i'll try to go around it a little bit because there's actually a shed where the pool is right now all right thank you um, may i add one more thing yeah yes um so i just wanted to be clear that when sarah first brought these plans to me the 200 foot riverfront river area line was not there so I did, I, I will take credit for misinforming Sarah originally, but that was because I did not have all the information that I needed. I saw this one line of RA line, RA stands for riverfront area. So I assumed that was the 200 foot riverfront area border line. Turns out that's the river bank. So it was mislabeled on the map. All right. So I went off the information that I had and I said to her, oh, well, if that's the riverfront area, 200 feet is only to here, it should be okay. But because turns out that's the riverfront, that's the river bank in the start of the area, the riverfront area goes more into her proposed plans. All right, thank you. So we'll, um, again, the office will contact you about a site visit. Mm -hmm. Commissioners will come out and take a look at it. Okay. Uh, again, it's it's the commissioners that, you know, that make make the decisions. The, you know, the, the administrators really make, you know, observations and recommendations. But again, we need complete information on, on you know the the entire extent of your project and how it's going to affect mm -hmm. anything that's in our jurisdiction and you know anything to the left of that blue line is in our jurisdiction so that's why we're concerned about it and we just want to make sure that it's done correctly yeah. so, and I want to do it correctly and I'm trying to give you as much information but I, I just need a little help from you guys telling me where you want things put all right thank you one more thing is that just to clarify on that limit of work, Sarah, that would mean within that limit, you can do whatever you want. You can put anything wherever you want. If you want to change stuff, you can do it at whatever point, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why we're recommending to do that because if you don't want the shed this way or you don't know where the shed's going to go, you don't know when the pool is going to go in, you can have that information given later under that limit of work. That's why it's important for us to have. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, we can discuss those, you know, out, out at the site and again at the site we cannot make any recommendations uh commissioners can only do that during a, a meeting okay uh, so 
we're out there to take a look okay. and to see you know what's there. So um, so that's our plan. We'll go out and take a look at it, and we'll come back and 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 discuss it again with you. In three weeks. Okay. okay. So uh, we'll be on the next meeting. Yes. July twelfth. Yes. Okay. okay. And Any other Mr. questions from the commission? Be, 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 we... Mr. Chairman, if yes. Sarah can be there and answer questions, that would be helpful. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Anything else from the commission concerning this project right now? Any, any questions or concerns from any in, in the audience concerning this project? Again, we will continue it. Motion to continue until our meeting on July 12th. We have a second. I'll second it. All right, all in favor, Bob? Yes. Tom? Yes. Jim? Yes. Alex? Yes. And I'll vote yes as well. All right, thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. Okay. And again, the office will be in contact with you about a site visit. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, item four, public hearings. Uh, zero Southampton Road, uh, again, continued from uh, 614, 2022. Uh, Ryan, Ryan's here. You want to update us? Thank you. Hi, Ryan. One Ryan Nelson from R. Levesque Associates. Um, hopefully you can all see my screen. <clears throat> Last time we met uh, for this proposed self-storage facility, uh, we, there were two items of concern um, summarized. One was the uh, tree count was requested within the buffer zone versus the, uh, I guess, the proposed development and what would be removed. We have a tally of approximately 105 trees that would be over four inches uh, diameter breast height or greater within our limit of work. Um, we're just presenting that information, although um, I believe there was some talk last time in between Rob and uh, some of the members of the commission <clears throat> about the, uh, I guess the, the tree policy and its implementation and what would be I guess, required or actually regulated for this project. And then the second item. So, so Ryan, before you jump to number two, sure. so there's 105 trees that are within 100 feet of the uh, resource area. Is that what you said? Oh, Mr. Geeler can correct me, but I believe there's 105 trees within the buffer zone proposed to be removed. And the buffer zone is how far from the resource area? 100 feet. Okay, thanks. Yep. And then- but That would only be in the 50 feet, right? Because correct. you're not- right. The gotcha. outer 50 okay. to 100, correct. Yeah. Our limit of work does not go inside the 50, yep. All right, thank you. Uh, then the second item was the discussion brought up about a proposed monitoring well to uh, evaluate any potential pollutants or change to groundwater quality from the proposed development. So we talked with Mark O'Malley from OTO in Springfield um, about how to go about doing that and some potential locations. And based on the soils and the shallow ledge that was widespread across the property, we didn't believe a monitoring well would be an efficient way to do that because in theory ground or sorry, rainwater would infiltrate the soil and then hit that restrictive ledge layer and then just sheet flow to the wetlands and it would skirt right on top and by the monitoring well. Um, so we don't think a monitoring well would be a, an a accurate or effective way to monitor the groundwater status and any potential effects from the development. So instead, if the commission still believes a monitoring well is needed, um, OTO has suggested rather than a monitoring well to collect uh, samples from Arm Brook at a point upstream of the development to act as a reference mark, and then at a point downstream of the development within the subject property. And then those can be, those samples can be evaluated for hydrocarbons and petroleum related pollutants. So how often, Ryan, how often do they recommend we do this? Um, I believe he said once annually in the late fall. Uh, through the chair, Rob Levesque, um, we would suggest prior to construction um, that sampling be done at both locations uh, to set a baseline. And then just after construction is complete, um, when we get our certificate of occupancy 
and then annually. That was what was recommended. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Rob. Thank you. Um, all right, any questions from the commission? I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, yeah, could the applicant talk a little bit, either Ryan or Rob, a little bit more about the ledge and how deep the ledge is down from uh, the, so the top soil line? And just to give us a bit of an understanding of the uh, the underground situation out there. Sure. <clears throat> so I did test pits on this property. You can see on this existing conditions plan, uh, these symbols, those square symbols with the black and white bisecting line, those are where the test pits were done. So test pit one, three, four, five, six, and so on. And those correspond with our soil evaluator logs that were completed. Um, so if you look at uh, like test pit two at, you know, 20, 26 inches, we hit a restrictive layer. Test pit four at 22 inches down from the surface, we hit a restrictive ledge. Uh, test pit six at 72 inches, we hit ledge. Test pit seven at 32 inches, we hit ledge, 23 inches. So it varied, but it was all, you know, generally within six feet, we were hitting ledge. Wow. Wow. It, it, wow. <laughs> I, ju I just didn't expect that. I don't know what I expected, but interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we had, you know, Mr. Geeler had a very large excavator on site, and yeah. uh, it, it wasn't even, it was just scraping, so it uh, definitely wasn't large till, it was definitely ledge. Hmm. All right, so so that, does that suggest that once you grade or, or you know, remove so, uh, soil um, for the foundation of the building, you, you're going to be pretty close to that ledge? And I, does that impact you? Out of curiosity, does that impact uh, the stability of your building and the construction technique to use, or does that provide more stability for you? Uh, uh, our footings are generally above, uh, well above. Um, obviously, our stormwater basin had to be sited in such a location that uh, we meet the DEP standards. Okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, we don't anticipate going below. Um, it certainly doesn't make it less sturdy. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Pretty, yeah, pretty tough layer. And I think, you know, I think there's been a lot of discussion about, um, the aquifer and, you know, the aquifer is way on the corner, far corner of the property as mapped. Um, you know, clearly this area is not mapped as, as aquifer and this area certainly has different underlying material than you would expect, uh, you know, over the Barnes aquifer, which, you know, is generally, very permeable sink. Right. So yeah, yeah. Okay. So it does transition to this this type of material. So okay. But you do you do have um, the proper siding to put the drainage as needed, right? That's correct. That's correct. And 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 uh, to Mr. Sharp's uh, question and point, um, certainly you know we understand the question about uh, making sure that this site not only during construction but post construction. Uh, is not presenting an issue uh, related to the resource area or you know, any sort of contamination thereof. So, you know, these these two locations seem logical to us. One is down gradient of our site. One is just up gradient uh, at North Road. So in the event that we did encounter any sort of uh, uh, materials within our samples uh, at any of these given times, um, you know, we could certainly determine whether or not it was coming from our site or, or, or something generally from the north or from north or itself. So uh, we think this is logical. Um, given the ledge, I think it's a lot more logical than, than a full well, um, but I think it should give us the same answers that we were looking for. Um, Rob, what will you be testing for? Hydrocarbons, and I, I talked to Ryan. Uh, Ryan, do we get any a list from OTO? I know that they... Um, yep. Let me pull that up. Thanks. We consulted with an LSP at OTO, so a mm -hmm. site professional that handles this type of stuff. Uh, right here, this last paragraph from Mark. Okay. Email. We well, recommend surface water samples be collected from one location near North Road and one location downstream of the proposed development, uh, testing for volatile and extractable petroleum hydrocarbons. 
to evaluate whether releases of oil or other petroleum products from the new development have impacted the brook. All right, thank you. Well, I, I think your suggestion of doing, you know, pre and post construction is good because you may be getting stuff off of the road, um, irrespective of your project. Um, All right, any other questions from the commission concerning this project? I just have one question. So there'll be monitoring pre and post. Will there be any monitoring after that period? Yes, annually. Okay. Yeah. Is there any so way? Me, I'm sorry. Uh, I, just, I just wanted to follow the same. Uh, uh, is the annual sufficient as opposed to, let's say, every six months um, if the soil is only at a height of 36 to 5, 36 inches to 5, whatever the numbers were, doesn't that suggest that any uh, volatile liquid be, would be perched on top of that? And, you know, or I, I, and I don't know how long it would take to dissipate. I mean, we're not soil scientists. Mm -hmm. we're, we're going by recommendations too, but I, I don't know if, if six months is a better, every six months is a better time frame. Um, or maybe so like, maybe so, maybe once a month. You know, this can't be a very. This is not a difficult test. You know, someone goes and scoops well, up a little bit of water, sends sends it to the lab. So, um, but we should before we conclude, we should talk about the frequency of testing. With that yeah. said, thank you for the alternative. I like having an alternative. And I echo that also. Yeah, that. Thank you. I just have so, one question: Is there a certain period where it should be done? I mean, I, be, I can. I can speak, I think I can speak to that anecdotally at least. Um, so I've been, I've witnessed a number of tank pulls um, in a number of, uh, we'll call it spill situations uh, in a former life uh, working for an engineering firm. Uh, I can tell you, <clears throat> I can tell you that most um, oil uh, does not take off. Um, it's a slow mover typically. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, you know, I don't expect people are going to be pouring gasoline into our stormwater basin. Uh, we again, if we remember our treatment train, which is required under the um, DEP standards, we have a deep sump catch basins to a water quality unit, then to a sediment floor bay. Um, certainly, um, those safeguards are in place to protect against knuckleheads, and there are knuckleheads out there. Uh, but I would anticipate because we have a curb site, uh, because we have fencing around the property, um, we should be pretty good shape. Um, the LSP had suggested annually, certainly if there's something that we see and there's something that's dumped, um, you know, that would be an immediate a response action, so to speak. Um, not using the term, not stealing the term from DEP necessarily, but generally we would, uh, the proponent or the owner at the time would respond immediately and deal with whatever was there because obviously they don't want a contamination problem. As you can imagine, imagine it becomes a title issue if there's, you know, if there's problems or contamination on the site, not to mention the resource area. So, um, so and, and, and to Mr. Sharp's point, once a month is uh, probably, in our opinion, uh, very frequent. Um, the kind of activity we expect here is people coming and going, moving in and out of these places, storing furniture and, and other household items. So we don't anticipate that we're going to have, you know, this is not a even this is not even a construction yard or anything like that. So we don't anticipate any of those types of uses. So we think annually is logical based on the advice of the licensed site professional that does this very specific type of work. That's why we brought them in. Thank, thank you, hey, Rob. Thank you. You, you also you also sent um, and again thank you for sending it out ahead of time a report from uh, the other engineer or OTO. Is that right? That is correct. Uh, that was that was addressing, you know, basically saying, no, nah, you can't you can't have a monitoring well. And with it, they they included a couple of charts that I thought were fascinating. One one was for retention basin stats, and it compared it to uh, detention with with the deep pump that you're talking about. When when I looked at those, I, I came away with the impression that the system that you've designed will will remove up to 90% of, of solids. I, I think the reg is like 80%, but if I read it right, what, and then I also read that, that it, it requires large, large acreage. They were saying something like a minimum of, of 20 acres for a, 
uh, for a for what you're designing. Um, did I understand those either that report correctly? Is it possible to put that report up, Ryan? Are you are you able to? Do you know yep. what they sent you? Or yes. Ryan, might be from the email from OTO. Yep, I got it. Give me one second. I, I found them actually quite informative also. So I wanted to weigh in on that, especially for this site. Yeah, so this is the email uh, for those in the audience. This is an email from O'Reilly Talbot and Oaken. Um, this is from Mark O'Malley. He's an associate over there. Um, he basically, went through the DEP guidelines that we deal with for our stormwater design. Um, and there are uh, BMPs for different types of basins. He basically describes those uh, two different types of basins, an extended dry basin and an infiltration basin. Um, and, and basically uh, infiltration basins, um, monitoring wells installed one well in the main basin per 5,000 square feet of basin floor. Our basin's much smaller than that, um, and it is a detention basin, uh, extended dry, I'm sorry, extended dry basin, correct, Ryan, not an infiltration basin? Correct, it's not an infiltration basin. So, but this is all, you know, interesting, but again, the ledge obviously is a, fa a major factor in why we wouldn't do even do a well regardless. Um, but we can, we think we can capture any runoff or any sort of potential contamination um, you know, running off that ledge layer into the stream. Yeah, but actually you did do one of those, right? You did the extended dry basin and you threw a, a, a pump in the bottom. Um, pump or do they, the, or, or does the extended dry basin always have that kind of deep pump system? Uh, I don't, I, I think we're, I think the, the term pump is where we're getting, we're getting uh, confused. There's no pump in the basin. All right, what, what is the right term? He um, kept referring to a proprietary. Oh, there's a water quality something. prior to that. So um, as we, if you look on our plan right there, you can see Ryan's hand. Um, it, that's labeled as water quality unit one. That's a proprietary water quality unit. It's like a more technic type of uh, unit that uh, separates uh, solids out, total suspended solids out. It catches a lot. Uh, stuff. I believe there's there, and there's there's a different schools of thought on how many you know how much TSS is removed, but generally speaking, it's there to remove total suspended solids, floatables, etc. Um, but prior to that, we also have the deep sump catch basins with the hoods, which are very effective as well. So anything that falls on our parking lot that were to run into the catch basins would run into the catch basin, would be inhibited from flowing or prevented from flowing out the outlet by the hood, ideally. And then if it gets for some reason, if some of the material got to that water quality unit, it would certainly um, handle it there. And then if it got past that for some reason, um, it would come out of our four bay, in, I'm sorry, out of our uh, flared end section into the four bay, which again is an area that we, uh, it's another catchment area. So it's a, it, there's a pretty good treatment train on this one as, as required and, and as would be typical of a design in a resource area or adjacent to. One of the, our earlier concerns, I believe was addressed, but it was like putting snow into this basin. Did, is that somehow now reflected on the plans that we will not put snow in this basin? It is, and uh, we had added a, a guardrail. We did not have a, a barrier between our parking lot and the stormwater basin. So that's been added. And there's also, I believe, Ryan, did, am I correct in understanding that signage was added? Uh, yes, I, that's correct. I, let's see, I think I have an older version, but uh, the one I presented the, at the last meeting did have the guardrail along that back parking lot line and it had signage. And, and the signage, Ryan, will be before a construction starts, so they'll know where not to park their bulldozers. Uh, so, Tom, to, I can answer that. So, during construction, the limit of work will be clearly marked. Uh, if you would like signage, we could certainly put some temporary signage up so that everyone knows that you know, or, you know, that we're doing extra delineation on the limit of work. 
Um, but these signs that we're proposing were for the maintenance individuals uh, post construction. Yeah, I thought we had talked about marking, you know, putting signage on the, the limit of work so that in the future, when you're out painting the outside of that fence, um, you know, the, 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 the maintenance people will know to, uh, you know, not throw that, their that paint we have cans added. there. Yeah, so yeah. to clarify that, that we have added. Um, the, uh, during construction, I don't, I don't believe that we have proposed signage at this point. That could always right. be, that could always be accommodated, though. It should you right, think. Mr. Chairman? Were there any comments from DEP that are that are significant? Or Anna, can you throw that up on the screen, or or do you recall if they made uh, made comment? I that was months ago. I don't remember. <laughs> we did receive um, we did receive comment, and we did yeah. ask those comments. Uh, probably like you said a couple months i know that they have been addressed in a prior meeting um yeah i i meeting, wrote down i don't recall and how long it will take this computer to find them there was only three i have them here yeah ryan i i i, I summarized them do you have them right oh, right there I summarized, I hope these are the same comments, but I, number one, what I took away is that we, the commission has the legal authority to require a larger undisturbed area. That always makes me wonder why the state wants me to know that as the local guy. Number two, they said that erosion and sedimentation controls should be installed uh, pre and during construction. I'm assuming you guys are doing that. Number three was clear limit of work. Rob, you just promised me that, right? That there would be a, the limit of work would be clearly marked. Yeah, that's correct. And then number four, they said preservation, preservation of natural vegetation adjacent to the resource area. So whoever at DEP looked at this, and that would have been Mary Groves, um, somehow was concerned about the the surrounding vegetation. But again, you're not going to. Is be, there a number four? I don't see. Are we are we looking at the you're, same? Yeah, I think you have different comments. He's, I think yeah, he just this going, was the, he's parsing up number two. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Right, so they have satisfied the comments. Yes. All right. Any other questions from the commission? Hey, Mr. Chairman, I, I have another question for Ryan. I'm sorry, Rob, uh, back to the, uh, the water testing. Yeah, and I understand. I understand and agree with everything that you've presented. That it'd be upstream and downstream. It's you know the, the, the two parameters. Would the uh, basin itself, uh, the detention basin, also be a candidate um, for periodic testing, since it is a focal point and a main collection point for water going into that area before it perks further, even a down gradient. Um, I, I think that's a great point. Um, it, it is certainly a candidate. Um, however, well, and just something to think about. So that if we could, Brian, could you go to the grading plan for a second? Um, so that that basin has a sediment floor bay. So if, right. anything, if anything's going to be coming off the lot, um, it's going to go into that sediment floor bay. And I believe um, in the ON, uh, I say ONM operations and maintenance plan for the stormwater basins, there's very significant requirements for maintaining that. Okay, that sediment floor bay will actually be uh, cleaned out, um, and I, I don't, I can't remember how frequently, but it's certainly in the document. Um, it's it's probably a couple times a year, or at least inspected a couple times a year. Um, <clears throat> typically, do get uh, sediment in there. Um, and they typically would go in and remove that material um, and truck it off site. Typically, like a company, for example, like JR Sweeping, you might have seen them around. Um, they're very qualified. They they you know work for municipalities. They remove sediment from from catch basins and other water quality units, and they would also uh, clean out those sediment floor base. So, I would think that it's going to be a dynamic situation there, Jim, where some okay. would be sediment that would be in there. Uh, All right. would be removed 
formally by a um, sediment removal contractor uh, like JR sweeping. So um, it could, and certainly, certainly it's not out of the realm of your, you, for, for you guys to request that, but I do think it's going to be a dynamic situation where we're going to be basically yanking out whatever gets in there. Um, if, if I can comment towards that, that's something I actually have a background in, um, is, um, influence and effluence. So working in a, in a lab that measured those for wastewater treatment facilities, um, pollution facilities, uh, filtration facilities, things like that. Um, they never measured, obviously, in this environmental lab what went on inside of what was happening, but the outfluent of what was happening in the influent. So um, I think having the monitoring outside of the um, basin is, is a much better option because that's actually what's being put into the wetland versus what is going to be drained out in the process of it leading to the wetland. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. No Thank other you, Rob. Thanks, Rob. <clears throat> Thank you. Other questions from the commission? Um, uh, I, I, I do I do want to comment that, that I'm disappointed. Oh, this was like maybe two meetings ago. Uh, we asked if the city engineer had reviewed this project and and Ryan told us that he'd had a verbal conversation with Mark on on May the 3rd, where Mark said, you know, no concerns or, or no comments. That, that's um, Karen or, or Anna. Is that typically how we hear back what our city? I mean, I, I count on those guys. Those guys know more about these drawings than I ever will. So it always makes me feel comfortable when they give their stamp of approval is it usually something more formal like a letter or an email maybe rather than a verbal telephone conversation to the consulting engineer that everything's cool yeah usually we get something more formal and even an email just saying it was i think we did get that guys we did sorry to interrupt uh i think we did get that email from mark Rosati saying no comments and um I know that seems like, you know, first of all, I, I know, know Mark Rosati for over 20 years. I know he certainly wouldn't write no comment if, if he hadn't looked at it or if he did or if he did have comment or concerns. I don't think any engineer would. Um, so we like those no comment comments. <laughs> <laughs> so that said, I, 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 I do know that Mr. Rosati looked at it. Uh, we did get an email. It might have been planning board related, so it might have gone to Jay. Um, but um, I know that I know for a fact they did look at it. Um, and it, yeah. it was it was planning board related. You guys forwarded it to me the planning board comments. Oh, thank um, you. And it was the question was to city engineer because it hadn't been reviewed yet at the time. It came before the planning board, um, and then the comment was no comment. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, any other questions? I have one question of clarification on signage. Uh, Rob, you had mentioned signage right at the line for the detention basin. Was that for no prohibition or I guess I'm just unsure. Um, yes. So I think right at the end of the um, drive aisles is a great location to have a no dumping sign. <laughs> no snow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because obviously that's the, the route they'll be plowing. So right. okay. um, yes, that's correct. So I, I mean, again, for snow, can we write it in the orders, I guess, for I, I, we've never even done this before. A certain a volume of snow. It's a it's a tight site. They're gonna want to push snow into adjacent areas. So how can we handle that? I guess. Um, I I think there you know like you said there should be a prohibition of dumping into the oh. into the stormwater basin. <laughs> I, I, to be honest, and I I I'd, I'd like Ryan to chime in. Ryan Gilleher, he's a snow removal contractor for the Holyoke Mall, so he can <laughs> tell. You he can tell you way better than I can. Um, Ryan, do you want to chime in? Uh, yes, Ryan Gilleher, uh, applicant. It, typically, I mean, I, I've had it with order conditions. It's put in that um, snow has to be removed off site when, you know, there's no parking available. It's a little bit different situation where these are large shopping centers where the parking spaces are are much needed where this is smaller parking area, more building. So as far as, you know, when the threshold is, I mean, we've gotten two inches of snow and, and an inch of rain and majority of it's washed away. So 
to say something like in a two inch snow event doesn't necessarily, you know, it, it might not deem it necessarily. So I think if it's something that obviously, you know, the snow can't be the snow. I think if you worded it, the snow has to stay, you know, on the paved surface, it needs to be removed as necessary to obtain all safety and, and drive aisle hazards and parking for the facility to operate. So in that discussion, are you planning on using any salt or other materials? Uh, we sent, Ryan, do you have that plan, the snow removal plan? They submitted a snow removal plan. Yeah, last, last time we went through that. <laughs> Sorry, what what did what was discussed? I'm sorry, I don't remember. I think they said they'd pretty much do whatever you know. They'll do it the same way the city does it in terms of what the city uses for materials. Which I can't say that I blame them, but it does go into the wetland eventually. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's we'd use a, a, a salt materials that are treated environmentally safe, safer than typical straight rock salt, which on North Road, that's what uh, the city's been using since I travel that way all the time is a treated treated rock salt. I mean, it's the, the old way of thinking was using sand and not using any salt, but then all you're doing is- Filling the wetlands. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. you know, the application of the, the treated salt which is safer than the straight rock salt, the application rate is cut down to about a quarter of straight rock salt. So you're applying less material. So on, on number seven, you have snow shall be pushed in stored areas that are indicated by the superintendent. We don't really have this on this property. So what would you do in that case? That's, those are the, those couple areas in the parking area. Like if we get a, um, Ryan, can you go back to the layout plan, please? Thank you. So this front area in here, for sake of conversation, let's go through a six inch snowstorm. We'd come in, plow, clean up, and we'd have to use either that back parking area, this front parking area, because obviously a six inch snowstorm, um, quite a bit of snow in those areas, we need to remove it off site. So we end up stockpiling it to then remove it off site, you know, within, 24 or 48 hours of the end of the event because for two reasons a we need access around the site and b we need the parking back mm -hmm. so ryan are you saying that every six inch snowstorm you're going to remove it unless the weather doesn't dictate that i mean if there's another storm coming obviously you're going to take it away but if it's going to rain and warm up you're not going to take away that six inch snowstorm yeah. No, what I was saying before was that it, it seems to happen more frequently in the last three to five years in my professional experience. We'll get an inch or two of snow, and then we end up with a heavy amount of rain or ice in it, in, in the snow aspect of it. You know, we end up losing the snow. So if, if there is a one inch snowstorm and, and we plow it and there's, you know, we take up one parking spot and it's supposed to snow again on Saturday, we might leave it there to wait for the next storm to then remove it. But I can tell you if there's a six or eight or a 10 inch snowstorm in this site, there's not, there's not an option. I mean, basically the way I look at it, anything two to three inches with cold, cold weather, this is going to be plowed and the snow is going to have to be removed off site. Cause we're not, we're not going to want to take the, the parking spaces. Um, from the customers and we need it open for, for safety reasons. So is that in your snow removal plan? Uh, I, I, it talks about removal offsite, yes. Thank you. So is there a certain- we, Why don't we just add the inches, add the dimension, let's say three, three inches. Right. If that, right, 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 right. that works and then uh, go forward with that except for weather conditions and i get what ryan's saying i mean yeah, if it's going to warm up i guess we I, I can't to, see him i can't see a hardship there yeah we just want to make something that's measurable and you know has some some target to it i, I mean i'm 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 talking a scenario i'm not trying to trying to beat it but i'm talking a scenario that 
if you hit the march and they say that we're going to get some snow, you go to bed, you get up at three in the morning, there's an inch and a half, maybe two inches, then it starts to train change, it's rain, it's 7 a.m., it's 45 degrees, you know, next thing you know, you come back at, at eight o'clock, it's slush, you drive through it, it's supposed to be 55, you know, yeah. those are, we don't even, typically, we might do sidewalks and we don't even plow the blacktop surface because the ground is warmed up and the, yeah. the material melts. But it's still, they still sometimes record it as a 2.2 snow event. So that's that's why I was kind of discussing that. Yeah. I think we can condition this just simply to say no snow is allowed to be plowed beyond the fence line. And if it goes beyond that, then you're responsible to remove it. You know, I think that's, that's simple. That's fine. Um, works sure yeah okay any other questions but uh, david before you close the public hearing if that's your intent tonight um I, I think we do need to talk about the tree replacement policy um how it applies here and and find out what thought the applicant has given to uh uh to that or what thought oh. the commission has given to that Aaron, well, do you want me to break it to him or do you want to break it to him? <laughs> yeah, break can, it to I him. I can break it to him. Okay, uh, David, go for it. <laughs> I don't think it applies here, Tom. And what makes you think that, David? Uh, because I don't think that was the intent of the original policy. Because obviously, you know, they're removing trees to put in buildings and I mean, there's no place to to put out additional trees because they've they've taken away the space and put in buildings. Um, so I, I don't think that's the intent of this of of the policy when we start first started talking about it. The, the policy talks about trees that are removed within the resource area, and according to their account, there'll be 105 of those trees with a diameter greater than four inches that that's pretty significant i understand what you're saying you know they because they're going to be putting blacktop and cement down they can't replant 105 trees but uh could we ask them to put them some put some trees somewhere else perhaps go closer to the the resource itself and plant 20 trees that in 20 years will provide that shade that that we that we so um that that is so important to the uh to the aquatic life or even perhaps plant trees somewhere off of off site these are um these are questions i, I think when we did that policy that's exactly what we were or at least in, unintentionally that's kind of what we were what we were aiming for i i, re, I reread it. it it's uh it, it doesn't say you know just trees that you know one or two trees that neighbor joe takes down i think it does apply for bigger projects like this well we we approved the baker project i think that's the name along the turnpike probably taking out more trees than here and we didn't address it the policy at, at that part, that particular site um, I, I thought that was pre-policy wasn't it it, it may have been i'm i'm not sure yeah you know, so this is this is our first test case if if you and the rest of the commission want to want to waive it we certainly we we loosened up the policy so that we can do that so that it is with our within our discretion to say nah mr jones you don't have to replace trees but mr smith we're going to uh, make you do that we we have clearly the commission can waive it in this case mm -hmm. i i think some more serious thought ought to be given to uh uh, to this be in our first, uh, if I may, first successful. I, I do think the the current tree policy, as it reads, um, does not read well. Um, I don't think that the intentions of it was truly specified. But in and in discussing which with each commissioner, you know, when this was brought up the first time, Tom, when you mentioned it, when this project was proposed and I was like, what even is the tree policy? I brought it up to each commissioner and every commissioner seemed to feel that its intention was more for 
um, enforcement orders or trees that were removed unintentionally or removed without permission. Um, not necessarily, you know, I'm building a house, so I have to clear two acres of land, you have to replace all the trees. Um, I, I think it is kind of unreasonable in that sense. Um, I liked what you mentioned talking about moving the trees or, or planting them closer to the resource area. However, this, this place is so densely vegetated that planting anything there, it's not, it's not gonna survive. It's not gonna get any proper nutrients that it would need um, because it is so dense. I think that in the current tree policy, which still has to be revised and reviewed, um, you know, under, under that one, um, this is something probably that the commission would waive um, because of just the size and the extent of it. So that, did that's I, did I hear, Anna, did I hear you say the majority of the commissioners indicated to you that they felt this policy was not applicable in cases like this? Is that what you said? Yes, the majority of commissioners felt it was more tailored towards enforcements or unintentional tree removal or tree removal without permissions. Well, I, I certainly don't want to hold this project up any further, but I, I would enjoy the chance to have a, a further discussion with the commissioners on that subject. I think I, I got the whole different impression of why we were doing a tree policy. And to me, it reads the way I think it, it the, the way I interpret it. But not tonight, so I'll I'll hush. It's on the agenda for tonight, seven C. We got to make it there first. I'm sorry, Anna. Please say that again. The tree policy is on the agenda under seven C. Yes, I'll be quiet. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's what's the you know the what's the consensus of the commission about this? Because it seems to be the last uh, item for this particular project. Well, I want to make a comment regarding Anna's comment that this is a mature area. The tree canopy that does exist right now is such uh, that not a lot of sunlight is going to get into that area to support new vegetation. Um, and so in that respect, it, the chances for success will be limited. That said, uh, there is area such as the detention basin um, where there might be some consideration for some additional growth but we don't want that growth to interfere with the functionality of that basin. And normally we don't want them uh, vegetated anyways. Um, so in regarding replacement of, of, the, of uh, vegetation in a developed area like this one would be, I also don't feel that we can realistically have an applicant replace all those trees. So we are going against um, just the practicality of dealing with it right now. I agree with you, Jim. Okay. Uh, other commissioners? I mean, I think that we've already done one pass of our uh, review of the existing tree policy. We are all in the process of editing it right now, and I don't feel that that really has to be applied to this, this applicant. That's how I feel regarding that. All right, thank you. And that's, that's one opinion. Okay. But we will continue on making the tree policy more clarified and to try to fit, uh, clear, yes, we got to clarify it first. Right. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, you're right, it is heavily vegetated around, all around that site. And they are staying completely outside of the 50 foot buffer. Um, 
Okay. Um, if there are no other questions or comments from the commission, then I'll entertain any questions or comments from the audience concerning this project. Hello. Yes, Marianne. Hi, thank you. Marianne Babinski. I just, uh, I wasn't going to make a comment. I mean, I've listened to everything that you have all done. I think you've uh, done an excellent job of reviewing this over the last four times that the public hearing was continued. I was kind of disappointed that there weren't more people participating in this, but you know, they're, they're tiring out, I guess. The planning board, of course, you probably already know that uh, they did approve the site plan and special permit. But I just wanted to, I, I couldn't end, let it end without uh, just saying again that I, I appreciate all the efforts that have been made by the uh, applicant to try to uh, conform to the statements that the Conservation Commission has made and the concerns that they have had. Uh, this is a sensitive area. I think the number of times that this has gone, uh, been continued just illustrates again how important this water resource area is, this armbrook is, whether it's intermittent or perennial, I still think that there's an argument that could continue. Um, I listened on the last planning board meeting to three projects on the north side that are uh, in the works. Uh, all of them either over the aquifer or partially over the aquifer. And as someone who, when, when I was on the council, worked on the water resource protection zoning, I do have concerns still that we need to do and be careful, do our utmost to protect our water resource based on our history and what has already happened to our aquifer. Um, we know that the best laid plans of mice and men don't, you know, don't always work out the way we want them to. So this is something we have to be very conscious of. And I know that this project uh, is supposedly going to want to do more into this area. So I want us to pay attention to that. Uh, Arm Brook is, some, uh, is a brook that passes through or over the resource area and then heads toward the reservoir. I mean, we, we've got some delicate areas up, up, up there, uh, not just this one, but some of the others that are gonna be treated too. So I hope we are continuing to play special interest, uh, special concerns to our aquifer on the north side and this overdevelopment that is going to, I think, contribute to more issues than we wish it would hit, what we wish to have up there. So I can only say one time a maiden at the planning board meeting, this phrase came to my mind when we were talking about all of the uh, license, the, the lease, the lease that the people who want to rent these storage areas, because we know storage areas was a prohibited use in the water resource protection zone, but we have this little exception here which we allow the permitting authority, in that case it was the planning board to make an exception because it's only partially into the water resource protection area. So we have to be careful that we make sure that that is actually going to take care of it. When we say, say that we'll override what that said because we don't think it's gonna be a problem. So. Enforcement and penalties, you can put all the rules and regulations that you want out there, but we know that there is an issue and the city will mention, will, will affirm that too and say they have, a, they have a problem with enforcement. The planning board, there are meetings that they have even mentioned that. So when we allow something like this to happen, we're counting on the fact that the people who lease these places and the applicant will monitor what is going on there, making sure that nothing that is not safe to have in this area, it will be taken care of and they will sign a lease to say they're not gonna do that. So that thing that I kept going through my mind during the planning board meeting is beware the Trojan horse. I mean, I don't know how this is gonna work out and how all that monitoring is gonna happen and how much protection there's gonna be. And I know they're gonna take away the lease from the people that put in, use the storage, but also what happens to the applicant? I mean, we're depending on somebody to be careful that they are actually monitoring and taking care of the situations that arise there because people will put things in those storages that, that shouldn't be there. So I'm sorry I went on forever, but this is the last shot. 
to be able to say anything. And I appreciate all the time that you, uh, this commission has uh, given to this particularly sensitive topic. And I hope that the applicant, because I have a feeling that's the direction it's gonna go, uh, will take seriously what the concerns are of the people on the north side when we deal with protecting our natural resources and our aquifer. So All right. thank, you thank, you thank you, Marianne. Okay. Um, anyone else? I can't, I can't see. All right. A any more questions from the commission? All right. Seeing none, entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. I'll second. Okay. Any any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Tom. Yes. Jim. Yes. Bob. Yes. Alex. Yes. And I'll vote yes as well. All right. Um, Annie, you want to post the conditions? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Thank you. Won't take me forever to find them either because they're right on my desktop. So I would recommend being specific on the monitoring. Yes. The timing parameters. I would also recommend including a visual assessment of the property for trash because of the type of business that is um, in that monitoring. Just a kind of a little have the person walk around, take a look at the property kind of thing. All right, well, yeah. Save those for at the end, okay? Thank exactly. you. No, just throwing that out there. Don't forget, right. don't forget. <laughs> Let me throw this in the proper file. Okay. Okay, let's scroll. Okay, uh, go back to, is that where we start or we go back farther? Okay, I guess we start with Roman numeral two. Yeah, you were right. Everything, okay. Everything before that's all general stuff. All right. All right. Yeah. All right, so 51, yes? Yes, should. 50, yeah, 52, yes. 53, yes. 54, yes. Uh, 55, there's no wildlife. Not anymore. No. <laughs> okay, 56, yes. 57, yes. 58, yes. 59, yes. I assume that's in the plan. Okay, uh, 60, yes. 61, yes. 62, 63, yes. Um, there's, no, there's no water quality cert for this. No. Uh, no permanent, permanent markers, yes. No. Um, signage, okay. Um, I think we can say per plan, right? Didn't they? Right, they did put them on the plan. Yeah, I believe, I recall Ryan putting them on the plan. Well, we I talked think about it, yeah. There's two different concerns here. One, right. signage for the limit of work, right. and then signage at the end showing the 50 foot buck, uh, marker. Or I thought one was a no salt or no snow or something. No dumping. Or yeah, no dump, no dumping as well. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, highlight signage and let's just parse it out. Um, next. Okay. There's no comp storage. Nope. And there's no temporary basins. 
uh, no tag trees. Uh, permanent basins, yes. No salt zone. I, I think that would be appropriate. How about the commission? Well, they are using a particular formula. So uh, I guess it needs to be clarified a little bit more. There's, it is no salt, but I don't know what the proper phrase would be to what they are going to be used for safety. Right. You've got uh, this round and round. Environmentally, I, I don't know the answer to the question. I don't either. Maybe that's something Anna well, can work out with them. It's, it's in. It's written in their snow removal plan. Okay. All right. Um. They're not using traditional salt. Right. Well, let's just add it as a special condition then. How about that? Yep, go ahead. Maybe, okay. maybe specify it to, you know, um, chlorine salt. Okay, you can do that. Chloride, is that what it is, chlorides? I can't even remember at this point. My brain is so fried mm -hmm. after today. Magnesium chloride. Magnesium chloride. That's, that's, that's what the city uses again. Again, here we are. How can you allow the city to use it and not allow property owner to use it? If only we could control the entire city. I think he called it rock salt, right? Yeah, no, no rock salt. No rock salt. No rock salt. Okay. But then what's the alternative? I don't know. Uh, just no salt, no, no salt at all? Uh, uh, Treated salt. Em, em, environmental friendly the icers. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah define that word, that term. term. I have a definition. I have a list. You know I have a list. So you have to include that. If you want to okay. define that and you want to curtail them to that, those, that term, you have to define it. Do you want me to pull up that list right now? That's well, I, I remember, I do remember seeing the list, Karen, and, and I'm fine with listing it the way you just list. I think there was like five or eight, eight of them. I mean, it's not going to take a lot of space just to add them in there. Mm -hmm. That's you may, you may find they're already in the snow removal plan. They may I'm very not well. sure that he, it's a good point. Yeah. 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 yeah just, right, yeah. yeah. Cite their snow removal plan. There you go. Okay. Yay. All right, thank you. See snow removal land. All right. Okay, and then, then number three, uh, 73, uh, right. Yeah, that, I, that, there should be uh, no, uh, no fertilizers. Right. Okay, uh, 74 doesn't apply really. No. All right, 75, yes. 76, yes. 77, yes. Uh, 79, uh, probably would we'll avoid heavy rain. Sure. Well, yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, then 80 silt sacks, yes. 81, yes. 82, yes. Well, they don't have any grease traps, right? They don't have any? Wouldn't think so, would they? Don't they, they have work. oil traps? Well, if it's a, you include it. If it doesn't apply, it doesn't apply. Yeah. yeah. But don't they have something in there for hydrocarbons? Yeah, um, include it. It doesn't apply. It doesn't apply. Okay. Mm. All right. 83, yes. 84, yes. Um, that was per plan. I do remember that was discussed by the applicant, the sweeping. Okay. So just, you know, so it's so part of the maintenance plan. All right. All right. 85, I like, yeah, I like just, 85, yeah. Yeah, during construction. I can't sell maintenance, don't judge me. Oh, it doesn't even know how to recommend it. Okay. How do I sell um, maintenance? All right, there, there will be a construction entrance because they need to do a curb cut. And that's part of, 
So that's we'll, part of the SWIFT. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, deed restriction number not 87, applicable. not applicable, okay. All right, uh, we can skip number six. I mean, and Roman six, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, keep going. Wait, are, are we not doing environmental monitoring? We haven't mentioned it. What the water samples yearly? Well, that could, could be handled, handled separately. This is during construction. So a monitor would be during construction to make sure they're complying with the order or the special conditions or replication or something like that. Okay. Uh, there's no there's no dewatering, uh, there's no dredging, there's no replication. Okay, so in 107, yes. 108, yes. 109, yes. Uh, future buyer, yes. 111, yes. 112, yes. 113, yes. You'll fill those in now, of course. Yeah, fill in the right ones. Right. Once yes. it be pageant, yeah. Right. Okay, then uh, special conditions. Um, okay, well, first the bond. Uh, Jim, what do you think? I was going to propose a minimum of uh, $10,000. Okay, um, yeah, it is close to the 50 foot. All right, is the commission in agreement with the 10,000? <clears throat> yep. All right. All right, keep going. We'll highlight it. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> okay, then um, back up. We're going to add special conditions. Special special conditions? Yes, additional special conditions. <laughs> well, the, the where monitoring. Do you, where do you want that? At the end. All the way at the end. So. Yeah. But it would not go under, it would not go under, hold on, it would not go under that page because that is specific only to the ordinance. So back up just a little bit there. So, so the one before that one, yeah, there it is. Perfect, right there. <laughs> okay, Perfect. thank you. All right, so we've got the monitoring of the Arm Brook um, for hydrocarbons. Well, again, rather than trying to do it all, I, I think just we rely on the uh, the plan that we, he discussed tonight. Rob mentioned he'd been talking to some authority that had given them a, a listing of uh, of materials. Uh, but all right, of what they'd be testing for. Okay, uh, so in agreement with the uh, the pre test. I'll, I'll give up on a monthly suggestion and be be happy if we can vote on a quarterly. How about once a quarter we ask these this testing to take place? And if that's burdensome after the first year, they can apply to the commission to to do it once every every six months or once every twelve months. But wouldn't it be good to have a little a little quarterly history as we get started with this this new uh, development. I, th I think Tom's idea has merit. I believe the applicant was recommending twice a year or once a year? Once a year. Once a year. I'm a bit uncomfortable with that. I don't think month, I think monthly is way too much personally, but um, I would go I recommend uh, twice a year or maybe three times a year, let's say the first couple of years and then it can be reviewed. Uh, I, I think it's a good idea to have some kind of a, a history on the property to know what um, what is typical. So, so launching sorry, from sorry. Uh, Rob Levesque, 
um, you know, where you'd get pre and post, uh, we'd have a little bit more post information. And right, so, so you're, you're you're comfortable with four times a year, Jim? Uh, I would, yeah, two or three. I was going to say, but four works for me. It's up, up to the board, and then but you know, I think maybe for the first two or three years, and then it it can be re uh, revisited. How about seasonal with each season? Yeah, it it was recommended to take the samples in the fall in the plan. Okay. But maybe for the first year, Anna, maybe just, and then they can come back to us just to, after construction. To so Bob, is, by seasonal, do you mean four times a year? Yeah, in, at least the first year. Okay. We'll sounds go. like, sounds like three votes for it. Yeah. Okay. But I do feel that it should be revisited after two, two, three years to determine a future schedule. And Mr. Mr. Chairman, I know the hearing's closed, but uh, if possible, it is costly. Uh, analytical data. The hearing is closed. Really, I have to admit. I know. I, I know. Push. No, <laughs> really. You know someone can appeal you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to appeal just on the loan. So. But I, I, have I have considered that, Rob, but I think the costs are minimal compared to a, a monitoring okay. well. That's fair. Thank you. Okay. Um, so you want quarterly for the first year? Well, can I ask you, David, how, when you've done it in the past, would it, how often do you do it to assess a, a, a wetland? Annual? Twice a year? What do you, what do, you do? I don't. Can, can I mean, you've done, you've done some things in the past, you know, with, with testing and things. How those often are, do you? Those were testing rivers and streams and you know that was monthly for a year and that was it gotcha. uh, that was the you know gotcha. and we were looking for you know um, ph we were looking for uh, bacteria we weren't looking for hydrocarbons we didn't have yeah. the testing ability to do that um, so in that sense david was looking for like naturally occurring right. um items and and their increases and decreases based on seasonal and conditional changes mm -hmm. in the environment um when i used to do um oils and material testing in turbinity it was for factories and places like that to make sure they are falling within the regulations and those were done monthly so that's because you know they're clearly outputting something um this this is a place that's not you know clearly outputting a pollutant um that is going to be like regularly output it you know what i mean like if something is is to go into the wetland um whether intentionally or unintentionally it's it's not going to be i don't think it is something to the scale that should be tested monthly just based on my previous life of environmental monitoring <laughs> so anna how do you feel about seasonally well that, isn't that the same as quarterly yeah. Okay. Um, Anna, I think, as Rob said, we should, They he recommended pre-construction and then post-construction. Yes, the pre-construction, absolutely. Okay. Because that will give you your baseline. Um, and, then, and then throughout and then, the existence of the facility. Um, but I would, I would like to see one right after, you know, when they, Oh, when, he, when he asked for the certificate of occupancy, mm -hmm. I think we need that post one. And it's then, part of the COC. Yeah, and then uh, not COC, but certificate of occupancy, yeah. which means that they've done the construction and they're ready to open it up. But I'm not sure, David, if, if you can actually require that as part of the certificate of occupancy because you don't have authority over that bit. No, no, I don't see it as a requirement, but I'm saying when they ask the city for a certificate of occupancy, then they should do a report. And that's what Rob said. They yeah, oh, that. sure. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. And then we can ask quarterly for the first year and then uh, assess to see whether it's necessary after that if it's necessary to be quarterly after that. 
I think, I think that's, that's fair. fair. Yeah. 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 Sounds sounds fair to me too. Okay. I'm okay with that. Good with it. All right. Yeah, read that. See, see if that. All right. Another thought I had in, in this regard: um, if they have a an event that they think is is a catastrophic event, you know, if somebody you know dumps diesel fuel or something in there, um, mm -hmm. would we want to test immediately, or do you think? Uh, the the stuff wouldn't get to the to the stream, you know, that fast. Well, wouldn't uh, an event like that uh, be taken over by the state DEP? That's going to be a, uh, that's going to be a reportable release under okay. under DEP. Yeah. All right. So right. they have regulations to to govern those govern those things. Right. Okay. That is my understanding. All right. Thank you. To that point, Alex, can we ask for like a shutoff valve or something of that kind of trigger in the system? I, I've seen it, but I don't consider them to be all that to be that all. Yeah, I don't consider it to be that effective. You know, it's not going to be Ryan that does it. And so if somebody dumps something down a catch basin from one of the sheds out there, they're just going to leave. They're not going to. You know. Right, but it, could there be, well, yeah, what would our, yeah, how would we know? Yeah, I hear your point. Yeah. yeah. Could we be notified of an event that happened? I guess only if they know, like he said, like Alex said. Yeah. And, and again, if it's a reportable event, we, we will be copied. Only if it's reportable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Mm. Okay, how about... Um, Have we mentioned no snow beyond the fence line? Mm. And the signage. And I think the signage, I think you need to clarify the right. signage. Okay. Fence line slash guardrail. Yeah, slash guardrail. Okay, then it, then for signage, um, no, you can, let's just spell it out at what, at the end. Oh, went too far. It's fine. Right there. Yeah. Okay, one fifteen. Okay, um, we're going to have signage before construction, showing the limit of work. Okay. And then there was uh, the rest of the signage was already on the plan, correct? Correct. Um, yes. Yes. Okay. As, as Rob pointed out during discussion, that they're going to put up some kind of I, I don't know what orange tape or something delineating limit of work. He, I thought he was in agreement that we would also, in addition to that, we would put up some of our stay off or you know. 100 foot line or you know resource area so we would be correct, doing Tom. yeah yeah that would be after construction um, yeah. you know, our so, standard so well, you know, I, I i want i want it during ow. before construction i don't want the the bulldozers out there i thought that uh, was and then of course after construction I thought that's there was what this, tom that's what this represents signage before construction showing the limit of work so they can't go beyond the limit of work what kind of signage do you mean? I'm 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 confused. Isn't usually the erosion control line their limit of work? Yeah, they're putting up a silt fence where the limit of work is. So they get, so I'm confused what your signage fence. is. What do, you, what do you mean signage? Well, uh, Rob mentioned, I, I, you know, showing where the limit of work was. So if you want to say silly little silly little signs we have with the frog on them. It's no, I wouldn't. Green. No, that's not what I'm talking about here. Um, Those would be post construction. All right. All right. Well, you want to rewrite it as the the silt fence is the limit of work. Isn't, isn't that the case? 
Yes, that's how it's recorded on the plans. So you Actually, want I believe that the silt fence is on the other side of the limit of work, believe it or not. It's between the limit of work and the buffer. So you, so you just, just want, want your typical signage at the 50 foot buffer saying, just don't go beyond this line. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. Well, we, we've had cases before where the contractor goes in there, doesn't know where the limit of work is and just cuts, starts to cut stuff down. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Beyond the limit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So whether they put up, you know, signs or orange tape or something. So then you just have to put the signage up before construction. Right. Right. You know, it can include orange tape or something, you know, to tell them, you know. I have them put the signage up. Just, just, just do it. Just yeah. make sure it's done. Just do it before construction. That's way you don't have to argue afterwards. Just do, do it. A question. Yes. So that the one all the way up here about signage. That's for right afterwards. One. Yes. Showing where the 50, 50 foot is. Is that? Or you, you can just change the language, language to use it now. You know, well, before no, it's, it's prior. It fall, it's actually under prior, isn't it? Yeah, it's under prior. Prior to the initiation of any work, one or more signs shall be installed. OK, so just be specific. Where you want them, how many you want. <laughs> I think they're on well, the plan, again, right? I, they're on the plan. Yeah, they, they weren't on the one we looked at tonight, but Ryan alluded to the fact that there's a there's one we looked at before. That, I think he that pulled them up signage. after I saw all the all the S's dotting around the perimeter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he had a dot mark with the S and so I think we can arrow. again go per per plan. Okay. Well, you know, sometimes applicants want to put the signs in after because of uh, you know where they're doing their work. Mm -hmm. um, this condition, though, clearly says prior. Okay. It doesn't hurt to scream it out again at the end, David. So, right. uh, so I'm okay with leaving. So you want to designate this one per plan? Yes. Okay, so just do that. Okay. But the previous one asked for number of signs and so on. So you need to go back to the previous one and say per plan there as well. Okay. <laughs> okay. So just put per plan in there. Per plan. Per plan. Okay. Thank you. Any, anything else to add? Did we uh, did we include the prohibition of of things stored in the sheds, or was that that added to the plan? Or I forget I forget where that was documented. We haven't documented that yet. It is documented in their lease. Okay. So that could be referenced as a condition. So just reference the lease, the date of the lease, who the lease is it is with that kind of thing. In addition, maybe uh, I don't know if we. Okay, so the, the monitoring data that they take needs to be submitted to the commission. So I would say, just say, um, and submit it to the commission because if you don't say that, they're not gonna give you the, the data. Any specific chemicals, materials, things the commission feel is inappropriate for storage in the area? You could list those. Well, that that on one one six here, that's that's what the list was that we saw. Right, right, right. Are there other things that are hazardous besides chemicals? Right. All the. All. Why don't you? Why don't you put sure. chemicals slash materials? So, you know, a battery may be hazardous. You know. Right. How specific do you want to get? 
Well, it says per lease, so that the lease specifies what they what they consider hazardous. I don't yeah. think lithium was on my list that I gave them. I gave them the list of you know hazardous materials to wetlands and stuff like that. But lithium probably but, was not on that list. <laughs> yeah. If that list is not listed here, it's not pertinent. So um, I can copy and paste that list. <laughs> And why don't you just do that and, okay. and add lithium to it? Okay. Do you want me to do that now or do you want no. me to? No, okay. you can do it later. Okay. Um, does that satisfy the commission? Yes, it satisfies me. Again, I, I got a good impression from Ryan, the applicant. I, I think he's going to do the right thing for us. If not, I think he'll he'll help us correct things that perhaps we didn't address tonight. Okay, um, anything else? We would, um, we would... Storage, or are we just saying not beyond the fence line? Right. And is that a signage issue? Well, he does have signs for no, sto no snow. And I'm... On the plan. Mm -hmm. You want to you know, put no snow stored beyond the fence line or placed? Yeah, yeah something, something like that. that. Pushed, yeah. placed, stored. Okay. Melted. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Um, shall we? No, never mind. Why don't you there? Add another sentence and then say, uh, see snow removal policy for procedure. Okay, so we've got their policy reference there. So you'd have to reference the date or the, the, the specific document. So be maybe and be a little more specific as to, to how it's referenced. Maybe, Maybe it's even attached attach it to the end of the, the, the order. Yeah, you can edit edit it and add that information. Be a good idea, yeah. I, I, I plan to, don't worry. Okay, thank you. Um, anything else? All right, seeing none. Entertain a motion to approve the Order conditions. I'll move. Do we have a second? Yes, I'll make the second. All right. Any further discussion or additions? Seeing none, all in favor? Alex? Yes. Tom? Yes. Jim? Yes. Bob? Yes. And I'll vote yes as well. Thank you. Okay, item B. Good luck out there, Ryan. Good luck. All right, thank you. Thank you. Item B, 558-559 Granville Road and continue from 614-2022. Uh, again, there's been site visits. Um, Want to bring us up to date, Ryan or Rob? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to recuse myself from this. Okay, noted. <clears throat> Hi everyone, Ryan Nelson from Arlevec Associates. Uh, last week we received Mass DEP comments and we're currently working through those and we have to tweak our, our permitting approach a little bit. Um, so tonight we're requesting a continuance for this project. Okay, do you have a motion to continue? So moved. Do you have a second? Hey. Yes, I'll second for discussion. Any any further discussion? Any discussion? Yeah, Ryan, can can yeah, Ryan, can you be a little more, uh, a little more knowledgeable? What's happening? Um, the motion, Tom, the motion is to continue, not to discuss the project. Um, we're waiting for him to update the plans. There, there essentially is no update yet, Tom, because they just got the DEP comments on what Friday, I think it was. Um, so they they don't have any updates. They have to so review. basically, Ryan, 
he basically said he wanted more time to review the DEP comments. Is that what he said? Yes. Yes. Okay, okay. thank you. All right, all in favor, Alex? Yes. Tom? I'll vote yes to continue. All right, Jim? Yes, continue, please. And I'll vote yes as well. Okay, uh, welcome back, Bob. Okay, uh, item five, enforcement. Uh, hey, Barry, continue from 6-14-2022. Uh, we have an update, uh, Anna. Ryan. Or... Yes, Ryan Nelson again. So I was able to get out to the site finally to uh, revisit the delineation. Um, some of the herbaceous plant community has reemerged and it was helpful. Uh, there was a somewhat noticeable boundary between uh, hydrophytic and upland plant species. Um, so I had submitted to Anna a revised wetland delineation of the property. That's what you're looking at here. Um, we had a site visit, I don't know, maybe a month ago with Mary Grover from DEP and the commission on site uh, reviewing things. And we did some preliminary soil augerings and suspicious areas. And uh, we just wanted to wait to see what the plant community, you know, what, what sprouted, if that confirmed our suspicions. And it did in terms of the extent of the wetland. Um, so this line here is the wetland boundary. Uh, these are the, the three subject properties. This is the property border here. Um, and then there was a, a small intermittent stream. Well, it looks like a former logging road, but it had some early spring flow. Uh, it's very small, maybe less than a foot wide that came down through the property and that was disturbed uh, from the stumping activities. So approximately from what we surveyed 18,112 square feet of BBW was cleared and stumped, and then about 21,872 square feet of buffer zone in the upland was also cleared and stumped. Um, so I'm going to be talking with the applicant and property owner, Mr. Novanko, and uh, determining you know what his future game plans are, but it looks like most of the property will have to be restored, and that's what we'll be working on next. Ryan, I have a question. We uh, approved them to remove the logging, the log pile. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think they're they're working on that, but they're they're also dumping stuff in the wetland while they're doing that. Uh, can you check up on that, please? Sure. Yeah, I, I don't know about the dumping part, but I do know as of yesterday, this the log pile was still there. It was okay. Yeah. Um, this was I noted to me today, right. so. Okay, well, thank you for, for your new uh, delineation. We appreciate it. Um, any, any questions from the commission? It seems like we need to, again, continue this and, and wait for their plan. Um, nope, I got nothing. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to ask Ryan, is, is the soil stable? Is it stabilized? Um, Within the disturbed area, I wouldn't call it stable. It's better than when we saw it last. It has revegetated quite a bit, but there is a silt fence around the whole perimeter of the site that's properly entrenched. So I don't see any further degradation of the wetland occurring. How about within the resource area itself? Since you've lost the vegetative cover and the topography has been damaged, even though you are having vegetation come in, you know, you have really altered, you know, the, you know, the top layers there. So I just, just didn't know how stable it was. I haven't seen it, you know, for about a month now. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I think there's enough micro topography going on with the ruts and the stump holes within the disturbed wetland area. I don't foresee like a huge washout occurring anywhere. Okay, I guess that's where I was thinking of, yeah. of washout. Does it? Do you need to do any re, uh, wetland seeding or anything temporarily, or wait for uh, a more defined plan? My recommendation would be to just wait and do a, a, a complete restoration in one in one shot. Okay. Thank um, you. I I remembered my question um, to Ryan. Um, can you map the intermittent stream channel as it continues through 
um, the bordering vegetative wetland, just uh, so that we know where it occurs on that parcel as well, since it is. Um, right, so it does dissipate at some point. I'm okay. I was unable to decipher where that was, if it was within the BW or if it was farther up, up into the property, um, but just the amount of disturbance and how small the existing stream was, I'm, I'm unable to tell where that was. So what we're showing is based on an aerial prior to disturbance and you can see that wetness signature through the property. And then right. just, just to note the entire property would be within buffer zone, 50 feet. Yeah, the, the buildable portion. Yeah, there's a segment here that's out, but here's your building setback line here. So definitely um, very constrictive. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, do you have a, a timeline of when you think you might have your plan? Uh, by the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any May other I make one comment? Yes. Um, Brian, if I can ask, um, yeah. it should reflect a stream channel in the front of the property as we're seeing in the field, because it does have a channelization. It does seem to seep out and then go towards the Northwest property, I guess. Are you, am I, are you following? You're saying somewhere around here? Yeah, in the front of the property, there, there seems to be a seep that starts a channel. We did see kind of that reflected in, in that in that organic material that had come out and really defined the channel line. Um, but it, for this to be a BBW, it should it should have a, a stream associated with it. Uh, so I guess it's hard to do. No, it's what was then, it's what was now. I get that. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, I talked to the property owner and some neighbors, and they didn't ever remember a stream being out front, but it's likely just due to the disturbance. And now you're creating a, a, a groundwater discharge point that probably wasn't exposed before. But well, we did, interestingly enough, see a definitive stream channel created by the work and by that organic layer that had been disturbed. <laughs> I mean, we saw it in the field, it did, it did create, um, I mean, there was flow. So anyway, that was just my observation in the field. Okay. What is it, if it's a BV, if it, bleh, if it is a BVW, um, where is the wet, where, it, where is it bordering? <coughs> is it a BVW or an isolated wetland or? That's, that's what I'm wondering. I think it ultimately goes to drainage down onto West Road. Okay. So there are streams downstream, yes. All right, any other questions? David, I, I wanna remember the agenda from two weeks ago. There were two enforcements for Bayberry Lane. Um, You've voted to down. continue the other one until July 12th. So you're keeping track of that somewhere off the agenda? Uh, in the minutes that I haven't finished. It, you know, rather, it, it, I know it, it becomes a little weird, but it makes it safer to, you know, likely that I'll remember it next time if it's on the agenda. I'm, I might, what I'm saying is maybe you want to put it back on since it's still an open enforcement. It'll be back on. Unless you've got a better agenda. tracking system. That... When was it continued to? I, I'm, I guess I'm... July 12th. Okay, so, so that when, that's when it will be discussed next. Yes, if it's not discussed, I don't put it on the agenda because then it's not. How do you, how do you keep track of it then, Anna? How do you know? I mean, what, what's your... Do you put it on your calendar? To my, wonderful, it on July my wonderful notes that I write all over these and hang on to forever and ever and ever and never throw away. <laughs> Those posty notes? No, they're not posty notes. It's the agenda. <laughs> and then I do write it on a post it note and then I stick it on the whiteboard in my office that has everything organized from RDAs to COCs to sites. Okay. So the second one we we will talk about next meeting, correct? Correct. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, item B, 300 Union Street. Uh, mm -hmm. We did not vote to continue Bayberry Lane yet. I make sorry. a motion that we, con that we continue item 5A enforcement until our next meeting. We have a second? Second. Oh, I'll show. Okay, any, any discussion? You need oh, a site visit, right? You want, a, or, want another site visit? Is that what you guys want right now or no? No, they're continuing. Yeah. Uh, continuing for a restoration plan? Right, so do you want a site visit to see the delineation or no? Do you want to wait, I guess? Well, yeah, we're continuing until we get a, 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 a remote, I mean, a, a, a plan on how he's going to fix it, right? Yeah, maybe, maybe review the both at the same time. So, sorry. Okay. Um, all right. All in favor, Bob? Yes. Jim? Yes. Tom? Yes. Alex? Yes. And I'll vote yes as well. Um, I got a question. I guess about procedure. You know, if we open an enforcement, I mean, why do we still have to vote to continue it? I mean, the enforcement should be in 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 effect until we close it out. For the same I, reasons you have to vote to continue RDs and NOIs. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I think it's more just administratively as a as a timeline to follow. Okay what the commission's decision is. It's not required as an RDA or an NOI. You can continue it to a month from now or, or, or what have you, but I think because there's so, so many unknowns, it's good to do two weeks and two weeks and two weeks. Yeah, okay. typically you guys, well, at least when I when I came on and we first started doing the meetings, you guys would say, oh, continue until this date. And you would, you would specify you know, when they have to get the information to you by and when it would next be on the agenda. Okay, thank you. All right, item B, 300 Union Street. Um, again, is Ryan still here? Yep. Oh, thank you, Ryan. What's an update? Thank you. Uh, sure, so finally have an existing conditions plan here for you. Woo. Um, this is, uh, Custom railing building, 300 Union Street, existing buildings here. Uh, there's a paved parking area that wraps around back. There's a BVW at the rear of the parking area on this boundary here. And what had occurred through talking with the owner was they had cleared out some understory brush, I think, uh, and started dumping gravel off the edge of the existing pavement to try and expand uh, the parking area for their vehicles. Problems that arose with this are we're within the buffer zone to the wetland, uh, most of it within the 50 of where they want to use. And then the second hurdle is this property is well within the floodplain. Um, so I'm still in talks with the applicant on um, how, how we'd like to go about addressing it and tailoring in his future plans, but ultimately we're probably going to be seeing a combination of restoration and then NOI filing. Um, so that will be coming to you shortly. All right, thank you. Um, and, and clearly all, all work has stopped out there, right? Yes, Ryan? yep, no, nothing has happened since the issue in the enforcement, which was many months ago. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. I mean, like they've continued to run their business because it's a business. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they haven't done anything else, hopefully. Okay, uh, any other questions? Looks like we need a motion to continue to the next meeting. So I'll move. Okay, I have a second. I'll second it. All in favor, Bob. Yes. Tom. Yes. Jim. Yep. Alex. Yes. I'll vote yes as well. Okay, item C, 240 Russellville Road. Do we have, uh, I think you already addressed this partially, Anna, previously. Um, yep. So. so Angel Noella received the enforcement order. Oscars, I just got back in certified mail, and then I sent out 
another one via regular mail with a note to stop by the office to get the original for his records. Um, the property is up for sale. I know that a sale is pending on the property. And then if the property sells, then the new owner is held accountable for the restorations, but the previous owner can be faced with penalty of fines. All right, thank you. Um, so we just hi. need- Hi, um, yeah, I'm Oscar. Yes, I, Oscar. Yeah, I didn't receive anything of uh, whatever she said. Yeah, it, it got that? bounced back to us. I just sent you another one literally yesterday. Oh, okay, because I didn't see anything. It's going to take like- two, All right, thank you. Um, so you said, uh, can you repeat that? Uh, once the property sells, uh, you were saying something like that, the penalty, something like that? Yeah, so enforcement orders run with the land. So whoever owns the land uh, is responsible for restoring the land. If you sell that property, the new property owner is then responsible for restoring the land, which you disturbed. However, you would still face fines if the property owner does not restore that land. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what are you talking disturbs because the problem was uh, everything was, I'm trying to do everything, you know, legal and you, the stars, you, like, you have dumping do in the wetland. Um, there's fill sitting on the property from the excavator. There's holes from the excavator. There is no um, holes anything because uh, that's the usually you have to make it to you, to make a port test, you know. Yeah, you got to fill those in now because you disturbed the property. I mean, this is already. I mean, the guy he already did. I don't see any any disturbs there. And did you remove all like the siding that came off the house and all the lawn chairs that were dumped into the wetlands back there and and the lawnmower the siding, that was the sitting siding, there? The siding we take it already already cleaning. I think you have to go and look at it. Okay, I went last week and it was still there, but I will go ahead and take a look again. Yeah, you just go and look and not just say it. You know, don't keep me make me hard. You all already right. did all my all my time. All right, we will we will go out and take another look. Thank you. Yeah, go and look at it. You know, so okay. all right. So you no, know, you already made me. Uh, you already made me. You helped me a lot for six months. So thank you so much. All right, do I have a motion to continue. So moved. So moved. All right, do you have a second. I'll second Jim's motion. Okay. All in favor, Bob. Yes. Um. Yes. Jim. Yeah. Alex? Yes. I'll vote yes as well. All right, item D, 33 First Street. Again, continued from 614. Um, do we have an update? The bond was filed. I have a receipt of the bond being filed. So I would recommend lifting the enforcement order um, and informing Ms. Peretti to file a COC if all construction is completed. All right, any other comments from the commission concerning this update? All right, then entertain a motion to lift the enforcement order on this property. So moved. Do you have a second? A second. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Alex? Yes. Jim? Yep. Bob? Yes. Tom? Yes. I'll vote yes as well. Thank you. Item six, certificate of compliances, uh, 109 North Road, uh, continued from 614, 2022. Um, so you went uh, a second site visit, I think on the 6th, 17th of, of, of June. Yeah, yeah, I met with um, Mark Reed and um, Oleg. They explained that the mulch had actually been there over for the past year throughout construction um, for stabilization. It hadn't eroded. Um, they claim that the current buildup um, along the silt fence is just due to improper application and it didn't erode. It just wasn't evenly distributed correctly. Um, the silt fence um, may or may not be a few feet away from the uh, 50 foot buffer. They, they don't know, we're still waiting on the as builts for that one just to double check. Um, they agreed that based on the plans, there needs to be an additional sign. It was kind of hidden in all of the lines, but there is a dot there. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I, I do, you know, the commission had motions to um, remove the mulch and install and well, brain. My brain just stopped working <laughs> and replant the slope with like grass um, in order to help to stabilize it. Um, they don't want to do that because they think the mulch is, is a better option. Um, however, uh, based upon like stabilization and erosion control standards, mulch is meant to only be a temporary um, control measure for about three years um, due to either A, erosion, B, dissolving, maintenance, things like that. Uh, thank you. Uh, is this Mark? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Mark Reed from Heritage Land Surveying and Engineering. So Hello, yes, I, yeah. yes, how you doing? Um, I, I did meet with Anna and Oleg on the site. We did observe that some very coarse wood chips were put on the steep slope um, in the front of the house. Um, I observed absolutely no erosion occurring. Uh, Anna's right that when they installed the mulch, some of the mulch is um, higher up on the silt fence line. But this is an area that not only has a silt fence, but behind the silt fence are hay bales. Uh, initially, when this project was approved, this area required both hay bales be installed and then silt fence outside of it. I am just very concerned that uh, if you remove the wood chips, you are going to have erosion, especially now uh, with the summer months, grass doesn't grow too well. And I think you're going to have more erosion of soils coming off that slope if you were to try to put grass in that area. So we are in the process of doing a as-built survey. We would like to request that uh, we get a continuance until your meeting. I think you're meeting on the, the 26th of July. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we would yeah. plan on getting you the as-built plan by the 15th of July. So you'd have you know, a good week to review it and look at it prior to the meeting. Um, but I think that there's a good possibility that the silt fence is outside the 50 foot buffer zone. The other thing is that when this project was approved, the commission had a 25 foot no disturbed zone, not like today you have a 50 foot no disturbed, disturbed, disturbed zone. Um, but in the filing that we did, um, and historically with the piece of property, we agreed to have a 50 foot no disturbed zone for this particular project. Okay, uh, well, his historically, the commission has recommended a 50 foot no disturbed you know, for years and years and years, but you're right, it's now required in the ordinance. Right. Uh, one of my concerns when I was out there is that you have two pipes taking uh, water from the drainage system of the house and, and they're opening up on the side of the hill where the mulch is. Um, can, you, can you reinforce below those pipes so that, you know, in, in the case of a big storm, I think that mulch is going to be eroded away by a strong flow of water coming down those pipes from the roof and the, uh, you know, the gutters. Right. We did look at that area closely, and like I said, it's it's the mulch has been there for about a year. We've had some heavy storm event. There was no um, evidence of that, but we can armor that those two pipes mm -hmm. um, with some stone to make sure that it doesn't uh, erode. Okay. Yes. Uh, any questions from the commission, uh, from those of them have been out at the site? Yes, Karen. Um, so to the slope and the mulch, um, the mulch has done its job and its job is to be a temporary stabilization method. It is not meant to be a permanent stabilization method. So it doesn't constitute long-term protection of the wetland. So, in agreement with David's comment about the armoring of those pipes, that slope needs to have some long-term stabilization, whether it's shrubs, grass, vegetation. I mean, what do you what do you see happening? I guess after that, 
mulched material decomposes. Then what? Well, I think I think it can be maintained with mulch. Uh, in and the has, and how, how, what, what kind of guarantees do we have, though? You know, vegetation is long term. Mulch is every what two years. I'm a gardener. Every two years, at least. Yeah. Well, a condition of the um, certificate of compliance can be written in for ongoing maintenance. Um, well, let me just back up. Didn't the commission already vote? I'm sorry, I mean, maybe I'm overstepping. Didn't the commission already vote to require grass? Or let me just say, what are we, what's the commission's, I guess, stance? I'm muted. Yeah, they, they did vote to remove the mulch and revegetate the slope. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry then. Um, that was two meetings ago. Well, but, but there's a point of when, when do you do that? Mm -hmm. uh, because it, the, you know, Mark's right, it is after the growing season. If, if you try to plant the grass now, it's probably just going to die. Right. Um, because it is so hot. Um, but that would obviously further extend issuing the COC due to needing 75% regrowth right. issuance. Right. And you wouldn't plant growth grass until the fall. Correct. 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 Yes. Correct. Um, Mr. Chairman, what about hydro seeding? Would that be an option for the site? But the mulch would have to be removed, hydro seeded with a tackifier. But it's still going to dry out, isn't it? it, it I, I know it would, you know, it depends on the material, obviously. Yeah. What's the issue with the mulch being there till, till the fall? What's that? What's the issue with the mulch remaining in place, maybe? Maybe beefed up or cleaned up if it needs to be till the fall, and then and then proceeding with the planting that we were. I don't think there's an issue with that at all. I think that they just kind of wanted their COC now, and I don't know how they would feel about pushing it off longer. Not that it doesn't you know, seem attainable to right now if we want the grass. Yes. So yeah. if we want the grass, they have to wait. You know what I mean? Or, or we yes. have to go back on that. So right. It's it's nine o'clock. I'm trying to move this along. Yeah. <laughs> Heard that. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, Thank you, Alex. <laughs> I, mean, just, I just, um, in talking to a local person that does hydro seeding, he's basically said that to me that because of the time and the heat and the dryness, that he's not doing any more hydro seeding um, because okay. he feels he feels that it's not going to it's not going to work properly. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate the feedback. Yeah. So I, I think because we did vote to have the seating, it's just going to have to wait until the fall, you know, a proper time to do that. Um, unfortunately, um, so we're going to. Hey, have Mark. To... I, I, I'm sorry, David. Go ahead. I cut in. No, go ahead again. I just wanted to give Mark a shout out. Hey, Mark. Tom here. How you doing? Hey, Tom. Good. How are you? Um, this is how you define retirement, my man. <laughs> For, yes. for the rest of you, I think it was it been two years ago, Mark came to us and said, I'm retiring. So I clearly remember that. And then I saw you lurking yeah. in the background on the screen, Mark. I said, what is he doing here? Yes, yes, I'm semi-retired. Um, so I'm still here. And that's what my dad's been saying for eight years, you know, that he's he's retired. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna have to wait till the fall, I think, for you know, for uh, you know, good, you know, good grass growing and Perhaps in the interim, we can you know, discuss maybe throwing some shrubs in there, something to help stabilize that, that bank. Um, yes, but in two weeks, or excuse me, in a month, Mark is going to come back to us. And Mark, I forgot what you're going to accomplish when you come back to us. Well, in we're going to have an ASBO plan. Uh, the order of conditions um, required an ASBO plan, Tom. Okay. So we'll provide that ASBO plan, and All we'll right, know thanks. exactly where the silk fences and the hay bale line and, you know, um, the house location and the slope. We're locating, All right, the, good. Wood, we're locating the wood chips and the grass and the sidewalk that runs in front of the site of the house and the house location. So it's a complete okay. as-built. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so we'll be waiting for that um, next month. Yes. 
Um, so I guess we can well, we can continue this till. Do you want the first? Um, July, July 26. 26. Yes, July 26. We like. Um, we're in the process of um, working out the. Um, we've done the field work for the asphalt. We just need to prepare the plan. So we're requesting the 26th. All right. I'm saying a motion to continue to the 26th of July. So moved. I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Bob. Yes. Bob. Yes. Tom? Yes. Yes. I'll Jim. vote yes. Yes. Alex? Yes. I'll vote yes as well. Thank you. Okay. Item seven. Good night, Paul. Thank, Thank you. you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Good night, Mark. Anything under regulations and procedures? I have a question. Y yes. Can the consultant actually, or can the can the coordinator advise somebody on what to do with their property, like in the sense of 445 Root Road, where you know Meredith was just like, "Here's where it is," you know. Because uh, it's, it's, an, it's, I'm only asking because it's an issue that I have run in periodically since I've started here in April. Is oh well, she said that, and I'm like, I don't think she, I don't think that's allowed. Like, <laughs> I, I think you're right. I think the, I think your role is to rec is to recommend and advise the commission, as the commission that makes the determinations relative to applications, and and. Um, and, and you know, property requests and so on. So you know, if someone starts to ask you those kinds of things, just tell them, you know, you rec, you know, you, that, that's what I say. I just go, well. I don't make the decisions. <laughs> talk to the commission. Well, that's why, you know, we, we, so Pete, you have been out at that site a few times, but I didn't open the meeting until tonight. And that's when the time starts. Yes. So that's when we go out officially and look at the site after that. Oh, I'm oh. I'm quite aware, and so are they. So okay, All right. And and well, David, just so you know, we were out there twice before you opened the meeting, which is highly unusual. It is. So we tried hard to help them. Yeah. And and they're just they don't have. They but we don't need have, them. They don't okay. have themselves right. organized. Anyway, go ahead. And and when we go on site visits, you know, we also say we can't tell them what to do. You know, yep. we have to respond to what they tell us they want to do. Yeah, you know, I've been I've been working, running their, into quite a few issues of them saying, well, she said to do X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, no, it's what you want to do. You tell us what you want to do. You bring it to us. And then we modify it so that it fits to our standards. I think, so I I think some of these individuals are misconstruing maybe some of the guidance Meredith was giving them on what they needed to do mm -hmm. to yeah. accomplish something. I, I just... Right. You know, I, I yeah. don't want to be negative on Meredith. Oh, no, 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 I not at all. But I'm just kind of like, you, you I don't need know. To do this or you need to do that, you know, but mm -hmm. but then they're coming to us now and saying, well, she said specifically to do this. And yeah. they're taking advantage of the situation. Or, so I, I just don't want to said, perpetuate that. You know, no, 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 no. I don't, no, no, I don't no, think but she I'm was just acting saying, inappropriately. And I do hear that sometimes it sounds that way. And it may sound that way to the yeah. public. And I don't want it to sound that yeah. way. Yeah, no, yeah. not at all. I'm just saying like, it's it's becoming between me and several applicants and mm -hmm. he said she said and i'm like i can't verify anything what she said but right. i know that what i'm seeing now doesn't align to what you said what you were saying right. she said you know mm -hmm. um, and it's just something that keeps coming up so don't be surprised if it keeps yeah. coming up and, and like, <laughs> you know like david just said at the end of the day it doesn't matter you know yeah sorry exactly. you know it, it's it matters what the commission decides so right okay item b uh, 36 Janelle Drive. Um, I haven't had time to go out there. Been a little busy. Okay. With my little with my little gremlin, but. So, um, all right, we'll wait for your yeah. update next time. Yes. Tree policy. Um, again, it's, it's getting only, late. It's only nine ten. It's only nine ten, guys. <laughs> you you set a short meeting tonight, Anna. Hey hey, short. It's you know it's before ten. Uh, Yes. How I'm much kidding. time do I'm you kidding. want? I'm kidding. <laughs> I have a suggestion on the tree policy because it still needs, um, I think we all need to think about a little bit more. Some very important things came up tonight. And uh, it's tough to do when we're all remote. 
it, it's just, and I have a hard time with it. Although I've, I've got notes and all the stuff written down, I really think that we ought to uh, seriously consider um, getting a subcommittee together, present something back to the full board. If that's of interest, we can meet at City Hall, meet in conference, con well, you know, we, we, well, we, we, we did that with the ordinance and it seemed to work. Um, also, the, the, the state has extended the use of Zooms uh, to December. Uh, oh, I know people have asked, you know, when are you going to go back to in person? Uh, okay. So I think that's a, something we need to discuss as well, perhaps at the next meeting, or or send your 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 uh, you know your ideas you know to me. Uh, you know, when do you want to go back to City Hall? I think from what Peter told me, you know, we're the only group that consistently does Zooms. Yes. Other groups may do them sporadically if necessary, if people can't get to City Hall because, especially in the summertime when they're not, not everybody's in Westfield on a particular day. Um, it would it would be nice to do that. You know, I, I miss those uh, you know those meetings there. Uh, so please consider that as well. But we can continue Zooms until December if if you want. Uh, I, I can't attest to every other committee has gone back to in person. Um, and I have a lot of applicants or people who want to attend that are like, oh, yeah, I'll see you in the, in the chambers. I'm like, oh, we're still on Zoom. And they're kind of you know, they're kind of disappointed that it's not in person or, or a lot of people don't know how to work the technology in order to get on here. And, um, you know, in that sense, it kind of creates an unfair disadvantage to people who can't figure out how to operate technology because they can't be represented but that's why i always get those emails <laughs> so who, who would like to be on a subcommittee to work on the tree policy i would like to participate in it and um i'd like to use do. Okay. yeah i'd honor. like to use karen's draft uh, as a foundation okay uh, what, what Anna, other person anyone else Anna contributed and you know we can come up with some ideas. maybe tom i Sorry. know you've got some good ideas Tom should definitely be included because I think Tom has a very different perspective than you do, Jim. Um, so it'd be good to have both sides um, come All together right, so, to try and level well, it out. So Jim Carroll. Uh, been drafted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been drafted. No edits allowed. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tom, is that okay with you? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I look forward to look forward to contributing. All right. Thank you. So please let me know if you want to stay this way or, or go back to City Hall. Um, uh, I'll David can, to can City Hall now. That's my opinion. So you want to do it? I would like to go back to City Hall, but will others I, I, may I want like to think to about to that. How about anybody I, I, else? I, I'm going to vote for Zoom. I, I would. I I think that we're just as effective on Zoom. Eventually, we're going to have to go back and and like you said, David, that'll be fun. It'll be good. Uh, to do that. Um, I, I'm wondering if we could do that when we do go back, can we continue the Zoom? There are people that find this more convenient than driving. I don't mean commissioners, but there are audience people that that might tune in like they did tonight. Whereas, you know, Mark or any of them might not want to drive to Westfield. I, I, I remember we kind of talked about that with Peter, but it, I think he poo pooed it's i mean it's it's broadcasted live um yes That's what I was gonna ask. Back to the question, David, I, I'm not on the front line like Anna is, or maybe like Karen is, as far as people being either happy or sad that they're not in-person meetings, but I, I find Zoom to be very effective. <clears throat> I think consultants like it, but maybe not the general public because they might have a technical Mm -hmm. issue with it. I can see that point. Right. 
You know, I mean, um, the what Zen I was going to say though, because of a unique situation, and we never sorry. did it before. Then, uh, it seems like that unique situation has petered out. So, uh, I, I'm surprised that the governor is still extending those. Um, but uh, it was well, extended back when the rate was up again. I don't know if it's still up. I haven't been keeping track because it's just depressing. Um, Mm -hmm. I also yeah, Santa, think, think that too, you know, it, it's live broadcasted. And if someone has a comment on something that is on the agenda, but they can't attend the meeting, they can always email it to me um, and I can read it off. That's what's been going on in the past. They can attend, they can't work, work Zoom. Or, you know, so they just email me their comments. I read it out loud, or you know, it's live broadcasted. They can watch it from home, and if it gets continued, they can send me their comments, and I can read them out loud there as well. I don't know, are we still going to be recorded in uh, two hundred one or two? What is it? Two ten? I forget. Because we're in the side room. Yeah. I don't. There's no video equipment in there, is there, Peter? There is not. We'd have to go back to city chambers to be recorded. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. It's a, something to think about. At some point, we've got to make a decision. I think. I um, understand. Yeah. What, I just want to uh, say that you know one of my reasons is aside from the personal interaction with the other board members is the ability to read the engineering prints much easier. They're much larger. You can really do a deep dive into them, mm -hmm. and um, and by seeing that printed data in a much much larger format, you can get a greater feeling of the context of the project. And yeah. another thing I remember, we could do or have the applicant insert changes on the plans while we were there, and and date it and sign it, and it becomes part of the permanent plan. Which is hard to do, you know, via Zoom, uh, and and it, it helped to I think cut down on on time dealing with one of the applications. Mm -hmm. um, so please consider it, and you know, we'll, we'll maybe make a decision next month on uh, which way to to go. It's also easier to get all of your signatures if we just meet in person, and then you don't have to come into the office every time I need one. Speaking of, I still need. Signatures. Oh no, Jim, I, you came by today. I need two signatures. I, I came by today. I want credit. Yes, yes. Okay. Jim came by, David came by. I need two signatures so that I can get paid for my mileage. <laughs> and they have to be before Thursday, expensive. right? Yes, it has to be before Thursday because it has to be. I'll, I'll stop Thursday. tomorrow, Anna. All right. Thank you. Thank you. If, if, if you're not there, you just leave the paperwork somewhere where I can find it. Oh, yeah, it's sitting outside on the desk. All right. Thank you. Anything else? Clean on it. Happy Fourth of July. Okay. All right. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a second. Second. All right. All in favor. Jim. Yeah. Bob. Yes. Tom. Yes. Alex. Yes. And I'll vote yes as well. Thank you. Good night. Hey, night.